Uh, so go up to Tennessee. They have like quarter comics. We have quarter bins and methamphetamines. If you do some meth, you can look for comics for a long time. Jesus <laughs> Christ! Oh my God! Ugh. I'm in such Why a did I walk into? into? This is the I show. Can't. This is the so. I just want to say thank you very much to all of our our viewers. Uh, this is obviously our last show, and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Reminder, this is TVMA, and this is why we have to throw this graphic up, up pretty often. Not Mere Mint is a show designed for uh, audiences over the age of 18. If you're a, a viewer under the age of 18, please stop watching Not Near Mint. It's not that we don't want you as a fan. It's just that we'll probably get in trouble if you watch us. <laughs> Shall we begin? It's New Comic Book Wednesday, and it's also the last New Comic Book Wednesday of 2020. This garbage year is over, and some of you might be wondering, where has Rob gone on the social media? Uh, I've been taking a little bit of time off. A lot of people have been trying to message me. I will try and get through all that hopefully tomorrow. But otherwise, I, I, there's like 80 people, and that's a lot of you. I love the comic community, but... Oh, that's a lot. Uh, so, let's say hi to the rest of our crew, starting with Lady Fantastic. Hello, hello. Hope you're doing well. Sorry you're inundated with uh, messages. I wouldn't know what that kind of popularity felt like, but I'd probably manage it poorly. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, you, I would like to say you get used to it, but when you're also having to do real work and a real job, like you actually do. Uh, on top of that, on top of everything else, it's going to be a little much. I don't know. Let's find out with uh, Comics on the Mind. What does he think? What do I think? Uh, I think uh, it is Happy Wednesday time. That's what I think. <laughs> What's I've been excited for my day. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to get excited. It's been a long, it's been a long week. <laughs> Been a long year. Yeah, this year's been like four years. What court reporting isn't a real job? <laughs> Happy birthday, comics no. on the nine. Oh, of course, busted. Ah, gotcha. gotcha. Busted, got busted. Up, no, where did you go, Rob? Rob <laughs> just booted himself from the stream as he uh he is he did is want to do. He'll be back. I know him. So, uh, yeah, it's been long. I, I, I'm just ready for like a break to where I don't want to think about anything. I don't want to think about anything. I just want to stop thinking. Yeah, that's why I can't wait until um, <laughs> I love Disney. Uh, that's why I can't wait until spring break because I want to go camping. And that'll be my way of like just going into nature and not having to think about humanity for a little while. <laughs> Happy Arbor Day. I didn't know that. I don't think it's Arbor Day today. I, I don't think so. But, you know, nice you try. Me it's Memorial Day, and I would probably just smile on my head and go, okay, does it mean I have a day off? No. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it isn't a real job. It is a real job. It's uh, It just takes a lot of your time. <laughs> so, Happy um, so I think, like, Today, what we're going to do is basically show, I'm going to show two different sets of 10. Two sets of 10. Mm, interesting. The first set is um, my top 10 books acquired in 2020. So that's back mm -hmm. issues. Ahoy, uh, Cap'n. I hope um, your better half, Tori, is doing well. And Happy birthday, Tori. Happy Before birthday, Tori. And then... <laughs> The second set of 10 um, 
is actually uh, the top 10 books that I enjoyed that came out in 2020. That, I should have did that. I was thinking about doing that as well. I should have did that. Yeah, I only yeah. got the ones that I wound up picking up. There were so many books that came out this year that were great. Uh, Captain Marvel wound up getting phenomenal. Stillwater started off great and just been picking up. Uh, Once in Future, I know that was last year. Uh, <laughs> Years blend together, and then this year is, as Lady Fantastic said, four years and one year all together. Feeling this has been good, yeah. A lot of good stuff that came out. And these last like 20 days are going to be like another four years. So, anyways, I'm shutting up. Um, did don't shut you up, have, we love when you talk. Do you have <laughs> something that you want to show, um, Kirk? Do you have a, a little package you want to show? Yeah, is that what you're? Do I? Is that is you guys hear it in the background? <laughs> Why not do a top twenty of twenty twenty? So sure, I'll make it twenty and then uh, segregate it into those two categories. So wild and crazy and edgy, Emilio Del Rio. <laughs> Sounds like a Telemundo soap opera name. <laughs> Uh, right. Who wants to go first? You want to go first, lady? Because I, I I have the books that came out today, and then I have my top ten. I think you should show your books that came out today, and then we can actually get into top ten. In All like right. you show your books that came out today. I think Kirk should show the package from Tacoma only if you want to, and then let's get into okay. the listage. <laughs> Okay, well, uh, let me go ahead and change the cameras and see what I got. Do you have a huge package you want to show? I'm sorry, Ace. She thought I was being really, like, you know, <laughs> just <laughs> condescending. I'm sure it's a good, massive package. It's always massive when it comes to... It's usually it, uh, right? Always. Huge. Yeah. <laughs> huge package. Oh, I don't know who does wear pants. All right, so let me blow myself up and get through all this stuff. So this is what came out today. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man, you all know, came out today. Uh, it was almost tricked with me today. My comic shop. Uh, this is beautiful, but when you know what came out today on top of it, every shop I went to, and I went to three shops today. My favorite shop, of course, Miami Fresh Comics. It's my local uh, comic shop. You can find them on Instagram at uh, Miami Fresh Comics. And uh, this is where I got all this from today. So I walk in, and I look through my books, and I went, no, no, don't tell me. Come on. He's like, no, you, you come on. You didn't put it on your pull list. So I, I thought I only had this because this is the book everybody else really wanted today. Oh, yeah. that's nice. I know somebody who spec Most hard on that book. I know somebody who yeah, was sending this me pictures of that three, it, four weeks ago. It's a spec book? What is, what's the spec about it? Well, it's the beauty it's, of it. Nothing happened. Yeah. It's but a black cover. Uh, it's mm. hard to keep. And let's look at the design. It's basically oh, yeah. a oh, really aesthetic awesome. appeal. Gotcha. But like it's a piece of art. Mwah. Hang on. Here here. It was genius. There was Avengers that came out today. There were two covers that I wound up picking up. This one, regular, and I'm so behind on Avengers. Well, this is when the story really kicks into gear because I guess it's supposed to be Phoenix. There's a rebirth, and hopefully that doesn't mean restarting the universe. Sweet. Oh, hey, look. Mm. It's a print of Captain Marvel. That Ove guy. Ova? Ove? Namor's son. Namor has a son? Namor now has a son in Captain Marvel in the future. Let me know if that's good. The Iron Man Doctor Doom. I saw the A cover. It looked pretty cool. I love Iron Man. I love Doom. I know they have history all yeah. the way back from Iron Man 150. So yeah, yeah. but I've been reading the Doom the Doom series. It's been pretty good. They I, got I, beef, I, and I, it's I, Doom 149. Yeah, this uh, I've been picking up every issue of Shang Chi, but strangely enough, I'm picking up all the variant covers, just mm. the variant covers. Because you're weird. Because I'm weird. My last name's worst, and I'm just oh, I'm the worst. Here's Werewolf by Night Three. Do you have the hidden um, 
gym variant for Shang Chi, which it's like totally underwhelming. Mm, probably not, unless it's that uh, circle cover with uh, the sister of Chang Chi, the black no. man, something. This one's in. like doo doo brown square outline. It's really not appealing. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we don't stick out doo doo brown covers, but I have been told by Dead. No, Cobra thank you. Um, to Tony Fett would like you to know that he loves seeing the Superman Seven in the background. Oh well, thank you. And Tony, up, Tony? I was doing a video for you. Uh, I just was overwhelmed by so many people asking for things. And it, it, I would have loved to have done it. And plus, everybody else here, I put placed a banner earlier so people could go check this out. There's a bunch of people that made some videos over this last week, uh, including, let me see if I can find these. I believe, I believe Tony gave us a shout out, though. If I remember correctly, yeah, I forgot. I forgot too. Don't feel bad. My bad, Tony. I owe you a project, bro. We don't, we don't collaborate Dude, yeah. on something. Life's been so overwhelming. Right <laughs> now. Oh, that's an understatement. <laughs> yeah. right, Check out Tony Fett, his comic book community end of year 2020 salute. Uh, Perry also did one. Uh, I got a chance to check that out last night. Uh, that is found at YouTube Comic Book Community Rewind. Because oh, you guys, Rob is butt hurt because Perry didn't include us in the video. I'm airing uh -huh. dirty laundry. Just kidding. <laughs> it's like yeah, I always way back in the day before I did any of this YouTube stuff, when I used to watch videos of Perry, he used to do this. Uh, <laughs> he would watch other people's videos. And Lurkers. I would think at the end of year video, <laughs> you made it. So uh, we didn't make the video. Uh, we officially, we didn't make it. Okay. <laughs> we are losers. Oh. <laughs> We're the kids that never We're the Because yeah. we are not mere <laughs> men. Lord we are the broken. broken. We are the broken. That's kind of weird and interesting. Who did the art? Um, that's a good question. I don't that think tie, that Gabriel that the, uh, the Null story. Uh, yeah, it's a nullified variant. It's a nullified variant, but I doubt it ties into the story because You're right. It's a 350 issue anniversary. There's a Honey Badger story. That one that. is clean. Can you show that one again? Oh, here you go. This is the regular cover. That is sick. Lurk and Perry. That's right, Tony. Is that Maverick? Who is that? It looks like Maverick to me. That's who it looks like to me. But there's a scene in the book that I already checked out earlier where Honey Badger is facing off against Omega Red, and it looks badass. She'll just cut his tentacles off. Uh, oh, cut he's they're there. Out of too. Here's X-Men number 16 that popped out today. Dude, it's like um, somebody copy and pasted Scott Summers' head and put it on Apocalypse's body. It also looks like somebody took the Photoshop uh, app and then just stretched the body a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Um, Up to and including the face. Scott Summers has been injecting human growth hormone. Hey, we're not supposed to talk about that. Stop spreading rumors, Lee. Just like we're not supposed to be spreading rumors. Yeah, just like we're not supposed to be spreading rumors about the fact that uh, this this clown hunter guy is going to be coming. Red X. Who? Shh. Red X. Who the hell is Red X? I don't do yeah, this. I, was, I, I I I remember you mentioning that last time, and I don't know who Red X is. What so does Red name? Major X is? <laughs> so Red X is a character that originally premiered on Teen Titans, uh, Young Teen Titans, uh, the the show that was on Cartoon Network. Then there was oh uh, yeah, you're right. Show. It's this cool looking character with like a skull sort of look and an X on yeah. his face. It looks exactly like the X that's on Clown Hunter's front of his mask. Interesting. And I've read this because I got a chance to read this last week. Don't tell anyone. Uh, but the story was so good, and it it leaves him walking away going, well, I'm not Clown Hunter anymore because it's not specifically clowns, but I do want to be a crime fighter. I'm like, got it. Look at the next issue. He's going to be Red X. Hopefully this hey, year. what's up, poor what's Mike up? and Southern? Hope hey, you guys are doing What's up, Southern? And there's this last 
52 War of the Multiverses. This is thick, so it had to go into a Silver Age. Just like this Tales of the Dark Multiverse, Dark Metal. Very cool. Very cool. And lastly, we got a boys, number eight, Dear Becky, because I guess this is now an ongoing. I don't know. Maybe it finishes at 12. Uh, I got a Walk with Monsters, issue number two. So Ace, if you're in the chat, uh, message me later if you need a copy of issue two because I accidentally picked up two copies. And what, what last is that series about? Okay, I Walk with Monsters is so cool. It starts off, first of all, have you ever seen the movie Hard Candy? No, um, no, I don't think so. Okay, I won't directly try and correlate it. So here we go. It starts off with the girl tied to a chair, and this guy looks like he's about to do something really nefarious. But meanwhile, this girl is strapped to the chair, cool as coke, and meanwhile, this guy's like, shouldn't you be acting scared? And like, if you knew what I knew, not really. You should be the one more afraid. And <laughs> As this as the scene turns into a slow burn, you just see this giant. It would be like of a monster the size of this entire screen just enveloped me and just ripped me to pieces. And you find out that's her brother. Jeez. So you're saying she's a flirkin? I'm saying she's a normal girl and her brother's a monster. I walk with monsters. It's really good. Meow, meow, meow. Maybe I'll pick up your number one. There you go. So those are all the books that came out today. So I got that crap out. Crap. Oh, crap. <laughs> all right. Back to you. Let's show. Let's go to Kirk and let him show. Who is this Kirk? Kirk? Show. Oh, she got Let's it. Go there we go. Oh, Blue there, there. There's my face. Um, so I got an A-OK -okay from, uh, I should probably look at the camera. Hey, how you doing? I got an A-OK -okay from uh, Tacoma Comics. Um, I'm trying to buy a book from, a couple books from him, but he just like a -OK them because he's he's that awesome. Uh, so I'm going to show you guys what he sent me. And if you're watching this, Tacoma, you and Nathan and Nathaniel are awesome. You guys got me into D&D, &D and now um, I'm obsessed. So... I hope my confidence grows more and more. So, ooh, this is so cool. So I, I personally love, you know, I, I love everything in humans. So I got this in humans versus X-Men issue number zero. I have this issue, but I don't have, I have like a variant of it. So this is cool to get the, at the regular cover. And then here's issue number, so this is thick, issue number one. I also have this issue, but I have a variant of it, so I don't have the first issue regular cover, so this was cool to get. And then I had he threw a number two, which I don't have. These Very covers cool. are awesome. And then here's issue number three. But look, it's our girl. I'm Moon girl I and know. Hells yeah, because that's where all the time she became. She became an inhuman. Oh, look at this issue. Issue number four. That is oh, wicked. Magneto is pissed. Wicked issue awesome. Number, yeah, I didn't even realize he was gonna throw in the oh my gosh. It's not even this is issue is right here is, is sick, but look at this. He basically gave me the whole the whole series. Look at this. Magic is about to whoop. That ass. Badass. Badass. That is awesome. So thank you, Tacoma. I really I really appreciate you do like I need to get the other tie-ins. I think they're the uh, it's um I forget what the other tie-ins are for this series. Um but can't wait to read these into the other pile of goes of mini books I need to read. But that's all I got. Uh I appreciate you, Tacoma. Thank you so much. <laughs> Go to someone else. <laughs> so do we want to do like um, top 10? What do you want me to show first? Do you want me to share my top 10 bought in 2020? How about, your, how about your top 10 of what you wound up picking up from the issues that come out Wednesdays this year? 
Yeah. You can do one of each because you're doing a t- uh, you're doing a top ten of each, right? You might as well just yes. show like your both I your could top do 10. one at a time if you wanted. Um, so my top ten for this year's release, um, and this is in no particular order, was that uh, Miles Morales number thirteen, the first appearance of his mm. little sister, or is it is yeah, he's got a baby sister, and um, then it's the twenty twenty variant. Yeah, so the video game variant is really hard to come by. And then um, my top back issue, one of my top back issue um, acquisitions was this Dynamic Forces, um, Dale Keown, uh, Red Hulk number one. So, yeah, that was, uh, is it, is this copy of the Hulk? I want to make sure I'm right with Dale Keown. I, yeah, it is. It's his signature. So, yeah, dynamic. So, that's um, my first go. Rob, do you want to show yours? My number 10? Okay. Sure. My number 10 book that I picked up this year is because I went to a, uh, well, I like my books not being found in comic book shops. So, that leaves antique stores. And I went to a record shop. And this place was called Record City Collectible. I did it just the other week. I picked up a whole bunch of these hot Star Wars books for $3.99 a piece. Uh, but I'm not a Star Wars fan, but I know somebody that is. And I was specifically looking for other books. But when I found these, I mean, uh, come on, this is number 10. And I'm not even keeping this. Very nice. First appearance Ooh. of Ahsoka. This is first Ahsoka in Marvel first full because I think that she appears. Awesome. In a single pane, she appears, <laughs> yeah, in a single panel. Well, He's getting that issue, too, because there's uh, 22 of them. It's in a stack. It's going to be going out hopefully tomorrow or Friday. If if Friday the shit's closed, then Saturday by the latest. So over to who's next? Kirkamundo. Kirko. Kirkamurko. So I have have two books because I picked these two books up at the same time. So I'm going to put them in the same pickup. But... um, these are just two of my favorite characters. I love. Um, oh. I know what you think. I do not think I'm weird, Rob, but I really love um, this version of Captain America. U.S. Yes, agent. I don't think he was. <laughs> and then Rhodey putting on the cap uniform or the fucking Iron Man. And then yeah. And Rob, you inspired you inspired this one because I remember when you saw I saw you get yours. I was like, I need that issue. <laughs> So now those are two it. great pickups that I want. Now you just need a 169, so that way you can get into the same argument that I yeah. got with uh, Nick from Key Collector. <laughs> what? I, remem- I remember that. I remember that. This is 170, and this is uh, 354. Mm. Both so great picks. 170. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I, yeah I got it, what you mean. All right. So... For me, number nine um, from this released in 2020, this was actually, um, this is Champions number one, Outlaw, that's the Walmart variant. I did a trade with uh, Troy Chavez, cool dude um, from up in Kentucky, and we've done some uh, some trades. And, uh, I, yep. And then from, just from the back issues this year, I was able to get um, the Amazing Spider-Man um, th- uh, 316 um, <clears throat> first uh, full appearance of Venom, I guess. I don't know. Um, Eddie Brock Venom. You know. So those are my number nine. Well, they're not really ranked. I'm just saying they're the ninth books. I have. One is a back pickup. One is from this year. Both are number nine. Yeah. Awesome. So should I go next or Kirk? You go next. Yeah, you go next. So me for number nine, during the beginning of the pandemic, I was going, well, I should probably support my local comic shop, you know, Miami Fresh Comics. And uh, we had two copies of this for sale, each for the same price. Uh, so one was newsstand, one was direct. Of course I'm going to pick up the newsstand. Oh, and- Oh, it's a high so one. 
Yeah, high grade at that. I sold off all of my new East 98 way back long ago when they were like five, ten bucks. We almost couldn't give them away, and yeah, yeah that was a mistake. Uh, but none of them that I had back in the day were high grade. They might have been like a seven five at best because yeah, I was a kid. I didn't know any better. So next over to Kirko. Kirko, okay. All right, um, so a lot of mines are going to be AOKs. Um, this is an AOK that I got from um, from Cookie AK, uh, small that little podcast. Um, he's an awesome dude in the community, uh, and he AOK this bad boy to me. Yummy first jubilee. Oh, two forty four. So awesome. Ass. Sorry for the crappy internet. Yeah. Our, our X-Men savant knows exactly what issue this is. I love Jubilee. Uh, I didn't have this issue in my collection, so uh, I really appreciate you, Cookie. Jubilation Lee. Jubilation Nation, baby. <laughs> <laughs> there okay, we go. Okay, <laughs> so for my number eight, um, modern, we only find them when they're dead. Oh, I've never seen that co that cover. That's all. Is that a second Ooh, print? Oh. It's second print. It's second print. Uh, we only the second print looks there. better than the first print. <laughs> Al Ewing knocking it out the park it was just yeah, a great, just a great independent book, and it's one of the best ones I think of 2020. So there you go. It's what I picked up. And another, the back issue was um, Adventures uh, 428. Ooh. First appearance of the Black Orchid. I've been wanting that, and I found it for a great deal on eBay. And um, yes, uh, totally into it. Just love it. So those is those are my num did, were the number eights, right? Yes, number eights. So there you go. All right. So my number eight will be. So y'all know I've been dealing with Hulk nuts. And Hulk Nuts it kind of got me onto the Spider-Man track when Lady Fantastic and I earlier this year started showing some amazing Spider-Man. And she showed me all the great uh, well, McFarlane covers. So I got those, but then he said, yeah, I have an older one too. So which one was that? I'll get that one first. Yeah, so go oh, big. First appearance of the- Oh, that's, I want that one. I'm, oh, <laughs> that's a beautiful cover. Yes. Uh, I'm coming for that one in 2021. Classic. It, it's probably in like maybe a 5.5 five or so. The back cover is like an 8.5. I haven't seen a cover this old in such nice shape, but whoever says that's a really nice back cover to a comic book other than nerds like me. But that is my number eight. Very cool, very cool. For two, Comics on the Mind. Comics on the Mind is actually just... He's just a Barajan through his uh, his next pick because his next pick was a recent pickup that he just got. Um, it smells great, you know. I love if that old comic smell is in here. We got some Silver Age, mm -hmm. some Silver Age right now. We got some Thor action. What issue Ooh. is this? One forty six. This is the I got this because this is the origin of the Inhumans that are in here. Um, so I had to swipe this up. And I was just looking through it earlier, and I'm just, yeah, so beautiful. I love me some good Silver Age. That's one, That's another thing I want to focus on going into the new year um, of 2021, getting back to my Silver Age collection. So that's yeah. my uh, my number eight. All right. Lady, number um, seven. So for modern uh, release, um, Phantom Star Killer, number one. It's Second like print this, just came out today. Yeah, I it. this is the first. It's, this is like if uh, Skeletor and Darth Vader had a baby. Um, <laughs> and then this is uh, the Defenders number one. This is my Ooh. number. Yeah, so these are my number sevens, right? These yes. are my number seven. So this is, I was really excited to get this. Um, I had been working on this. I need that and, in my life. <laughs> so, Phantom Star Killer and Defenders. That's just, these are my number seven picks for uh, this is 
2020 release, and this is back issue pickup. Hell nice. Yeah. All right, now I guess it's over to me. Uh, for me, this is one of my late night, middle of the night pickups. And this was one that might have been overlooked because somebody mutilated this in a way that I guess makes sense to me because I'm okay with weird mutilated book, but it's an old book. Somebody cut out an advertisement and then thought the better of it and then put it back in. They didn't tape it in, they just put it back in the book, which is weird when it's the first <laughs> of Zatanna. Wow, <laughs> that's hilarious. So wow. yeah. This is probably like in maybe a 6.0, maybe 6.5 on a good day, but somebody cut out the damn advertisement. I'm not near mint. I don't care about things like that. It's old one day. It'll be 20 years from now. I'm going to be happy I have it mutilated. Now over to Comics on the Mind. This is a book that I picked up uh, this year. I was really happy. I, I went in a, in a lot. Um, and you know my students used to read this all the time um in trade if you if you're if if you uh work with kids you already know what book i'm talking about because it's probably one of the number one sold trades in scholastic books uh but i got issue number one of moon girl and dinosaur and devil dinosaur i was so happy to get this into my collection um I also have issue number two there too, <laughs> but uh, I was so happy to read this. Um, I still need to, I need to finish this series. I'm definitely going to work on it going into 2021, but this is definitely uh, one book that I was super happy to get my hands on before shot up in price. I got it for a good, pretty, a good, pretty good deal too. So yeah, I'm definitely working on mine as well. I'm trying to put that series together. I want to have it put together before the end of uh, 2021. That's my same here, there. same here. And I, when my when my LCS was open, they have a huge chunk of the run. And this other LCS that I went to, which I'm not a huge fan of, but they they have good books. But they haven't been open since the whole uh, well, just for curbside pickups. So I haven't been able to go hunting there. So, but they had a huge collection of the of the run. So, one day, one day. Um. Okay. So. <laughs> Here's another one I thought. Did this come out in 2020? Did Money Shot come out in 2020? Um, I don't know. I'm just gonna say later. I want that series. <laughs> that, that variant that you have, I'm coming for that one. I have the original variant, the original cover. Let me check and see if it says 2020. Ooh, maybe a small it wood has your books. Damn it, it's 2019, October of 2019. So scratch that. And I can show you one that's 2020. Just give me a second. Yep, there you go. And October 19th. Here we go. Depa Department of Truth, number one. Um, this is excellent. You find out that the head of this Department of Truth is Lee Harvey Oswald in the first wow. issue at the end of it. And it's awesome. It's just, it gets crazier and crazier. So it's about kind of the conspiracy theory stuff, but it's uh, it's fun. It's a wild ride. I usually get on it. And then um, back issue pickup um, of the year, Miss um, Marvel number one. Oh, nice. Is, yeah, I've been wanting to get that. And I got it um, off um, a YouTube auction for a really cool price. And, uh, Yep, these are these are my number sixes. Damn, both are really good number sixes. Thank you. So, Especially yeah. Department of Truth because uh, we're now at issue four and we still don't know if they're the good guys. It's <laughs> I know. I would proffer to say probably not. Are you the good guys? I hope so. <laughs> Here's my number six. Ooh. Now, this is low grade, and you're going to see a bit of a theme going on here because earlier this year, when I first started with uh, Comic Gories, I lost to Comic Head 84 because I didn't have any Silver Surfer. I rectified that this year. <laughs> on to Comics on the Mind. 
comics on D mine. Uh, sorry, I was grabbing mine. Uh, here's a here's a. It's gonna be Silver Age for a lot of these. <laughs> too. Uh, um, here's a book that I was super happy to get. I'm definitely working on um, a run of the Incredible Hulk. And here's a classic cover uh, that inspired the issue number one of Immortal Hulk number one. Um, here's Hulk 105. Um, such oh, a beautiful cool. cover. Yes, I know. Cool. And it's a first, appear a first appearance of some caveman dude. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I was really, I was really happy to grab this one for a good steal. Um, yeah. So this is First appearance of a character we will likely to see later in Al Ewing's run in Immortal Hulk. Yeah, hmm. I, maybe I should read this issue then. Just in uh, case. Or, was that number seven? Or was that number six? six. Uh, it's number six. It's what right, I cool. want to be. That's so over to you. So, um, number, this is number five. Um, the, for me, is going to be, this is a heavy metal um sun eater number one i Ooh. thought the way that they crafted their own like ancient sort of language and dialect was really cool and they stuck to it and they were true to it and it's about um you know a, a, a drug addicted norseman in 900 uh a.d trying to rescue his son from a, a local um king so and it's just really interesting. Um, yeah. And um, and then, oh, my oh, gosh, God. this was an A.O.K. Okay. from oh. Tacoma Comics. Oh. I, I, I'm, this is, I'm at a, I'm I'm at a, a loss for words because I'm so happy and excited, excited about it. And so, and so this is this one is of my top. top these, are, these are my number five. So, um, um Sun Eater for the 2020 release. I've got, I'm um, sorry. sorry. And then Ooh, I'm I'm Marvel for the back issue pickup. Yeah, when it comes to AOKs, uh, the, the better when it's like that, yeah, they're definitely going to make our top 10 lists. I have some AOKs. And it's like, Most of mine are AOKs. Yeah. Now, let's see what I got here. Um, so earlier this year, I needed to get rid of a whole bunch of comic book boxes because, as you can see, I'm running out of space. Uh, so when you get rid of a bunch of boxes, you kind of want to get something just to feel a little bit better with a couple comics. So I, I invested in a black actor. Yeah, it is the Legend oh, of uh, Blue Marvel. This is the entire run. So, yeah, I was very happy to get this. It was an amazing story. This is something I hope gets turned into a project because Adam Brashear is just one of the best characters in, uh, also one of the most powerful in Marvel. I mean, Sentry was just ripped in half in uh, King and Black number two. That's what I was trying to get to. But uh, you still have somebody just as powerful as the Sentry. Well, if you're following Dr. Doom, the you're in a black hole. <laughs> God damn it, Dr. Doom. Victor! Victor! This well, is Doom about wants... the Earth, not just about Latveria, for Christ's sake. Well, well, I mean, it's not, it wasn't Doom's fault. Doom warned him that it wouldn't work, and Adam Bashir still went inside and he got stuck. <laughs> so it wasn't. It happen? <gasps> Where'd he go? Who? Kurt? Where did Kurt go? I don't know. Maybe he popped out. Uh -oh. He'll be back. I um, was making of explaining that, and I was going, oh, wait, wait, what issue did that happen? I have no idea about Adam Brashear completely. Oh, there he is. Let's add him. Uh, my bad. <laughs> I thought it was me. <laughs> no, uh, that's why you got to read that, that Doctor Doom series that's going on right now, and then that's where it's all happening. Did, what it's, a great, it's a great story. That's uh, that happened in issue like eight, I think. I have got because they're 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 on issue number ten or eleven or something like that. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a good series, and Doom like 
he used his intelligence to his advantage. I just love the interaction between him and Kang the Conqueror because Kang is always coming back from the future to give him advice on you know how he should proceed because like his success pretty much equals like Kang's success. You know what I mean? Huh. Yeah. So it's a good series. Read it. You have number uh, five now. Oh, we're on. The, uh, we're on me. Uh, Maybe four. I don't know. You're four. Uh, I guess. Uh, okay. I have four left. Four. Here, so <laughs> let's see. Um, yeah, four left. I'm, okay, uh, I'm gonna go with this series. Um, so, uh, like Rob, uh, this is a series that I picked up, but the number one is like the one I was really shooting for. And humans and the Black Widow issue number one. Nice. Um, you know, I love everything in humans, so I had to get this. But I guess this is a hot book because of you know the Black Widow stories. But I got them for the Inhuman stories. But I ended up getting that whole series. Shout out to Gorilla Todd Comics, aka the Todd Father. He sold them to me, um, so I appreciate you, brother. But that's my um, what was his number number four or number five. That's Number so five. Number five. Oh. Yeah. Because now oh, we are on number four with Lady Fantastic. Okay. Lady so Fantastic. for my number four, my modern number four, I don't know if you guys heard of these, but these little thing called Timeless Variants came out this year. And oh, Alex wow. Ross. Oh, and uh, this one is one of my favorites, and this is of Antithesis number two, and uh, first appearance of an hit Antithesis. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> nice. I have that issue. That's a great cover. Yep. Picked it up or whatever. Yep. Just, uh, yeah, there was just two sex of uh, the, the metal, the reflections. Yeah. Um, and then of my fa one of my favorite back cover, uh, back issue pickups. Uh, of this year was Ooh. the Uncanny X Men one thirty um, first appearance of Dazzler. So yeah, big uh, big you? one to tick off the list, and uh, was happy with okay. that. So this is my number four um, uh, back issue pickup and twenty twenty issue pickup. Awesome. All right, and hi, Night Tiger, and I will drop this if anybody wants to come on to show your top 10 or some of your top books that you picked up this year. Feel free. We are going to drop the link in just a little while. But first, let me ask the rest of everybody here, uh, do you want to go on a little later or do you want to wrap it up a little early tonight? I'm I'm down to keep going. I mean, right. down to 10. Like, yeah. I might, I might have to hop off a little bit earlier, but uh, you guys can keep pushing. Yeah, let's keep going because I mean, Night Tiger yeah. said he'll come on, and um, right. I don't have to. I'm off. I'm off work. Then I just dropped the link. It is in the chat right now. So feel free, anybody out there, if you want to hop on. So here is my uh, number four pick. So I guess he will come on later. Awesome, because Night Tiger will always have great books. Uh, yeah, he has. Uh, yes. Number four. So I Ooh, never get what yes. I want for my birthday. So I went and got what I wanted for my birthday. Oh. Oh. Baby, baby. This Ooh, baby, was baby. another one of those middle of the night. Uh, I think I got this on a Tuesday at four or five in the morning. And this person had great uh, reviews and everything. It's just that he decided to end his thing at like three or four in the morning. So yeah, I will happily wait that out. Okay. <laughs> so now I have four straight through like 300 and like 13 or 19, something like that. All right. I want that first. On. I want that night, that 119 and 120. I will start to see if I can find that. <laughs> I, I don't wind up seeing a lot of earlier X-Men around here often. I wind up having to get that in bulk uh, from people mm -hmm. on Instagram. That's how I wound up getting it. That and Lady Fantastic. <laughs> oh, and we even have Tony Fett. Let's add him to the screen. Oh, no. Tony. Tony. <laughs> Tony. Everybody. Tony. What's up? Are, 
are you trying to like send some sort of message that you're into DC? <laughs> oh, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's, there's no, there's no uh, I think <laughs> the only Marvel that I have in my collection is the DC versus Marvel crossover they did. That's it. It's I not got bad. nothing else. So yeah. all those slabs in the, um, in the back are all DC or like every yeah. left except except the Predator and the Aliens, they were dark okay. horse back then. But well, yeah. you know, and I, hilarious. <laughs> as we say in the south, bless your heart. Well, oh, thank shit. you, thank you. <laughs> but you guys got to see. I was watching your show, watching your guys' comics, watching your top ten. I'm like, man, these guys are putting out some some decent books, and I heard you guys were like gonna. You know, open up for a little show and tell. I'm like, man, what am I going to grab? Because, you know, I grabbed, uh, I was able to get a bunch of cool books this year. So it was Jealous. tough for me to pick. So I narrowed it down to six. I didn't do 10, but I did six. Sweet. Um, That's something. <laughs> and I'll keep it brief. Yeah. That way, that way everyone can get a chance to come on. But uh, mine, mine, are, mine are pretty, uh, not as cool as your guys, like that Hawkman number four. Oh man, that was hot. Yeah, that was pretty nice. But anyway, nice uh, this Ooh. one is a AOK I got from uh, Comic Foo, my buddy who does the uh, retro oh, review awesome. with me. Uh, yeah, the cool. IMAX exclusive uh, Shazam number one when the movie came out. Very nice. Um, another AOK I got from someone off the CBCS forums, uh, a signed Sinestro number one. Colin Bond. Ooh, wow. Colin Bond. Mm -hmm. A signed Sinestro number two by Colin Bond. Damn. That's a cool cover. It is an awesome cover. Sinestro is one of my cool villains. I, That's I love very him. like uh, uh, Secrets of Haunted House or House of, you know, like very 70s uh, ish, the cover. I like yes. it. Yes. DC <laughs> Horror 70s. Yeah, like House <laughs> of Secrets and House of Mystery and all that. Batman Great. Superman number one by Greg Pack. Ooh. Very cool. Uh, I got <gasps> Batman Who Laughs number one at a 9.8. You can kind of see that. Right that's, a great, very, that's a very great, great time. I've never seen that cover this before. Is, yeah, this is the Neil, Neil, uh, Neil Adams homage one. But what's nice, about, interesting about this one, uh, there are only 259.8s with the Mike Mayhew autograph on it. And it's noted on the label that there's uh, only 250. And this one is number 169. So are you saying you're kind of a big deal? Is that what you're saying? I'm not a big deal. This book is a big deal. I'm nothing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the other cool one I grabbed, that was Slab, this is Dark Knight's Death Metal number 194. But... This is from the personal collection of Scott Snyder, and it is notated, you know, in the label from the personal collection of Scott Snyder. So this was Whoa. Scott wow. Snyder's book, and now I got like, it. Was he just like, I need to get rid of a bunch of crap? Um, I. I think by. what they do. <laughs> I think what they do is, um, you know, when when you're in the comic book realm, uh, they give you so many copies of your book for free. Yeah. And uh, what he did is he just brought them to a con, and okay. he just started like sign. Okay, this one was mine, and they they notated on the label That's for smart. me. I thought that was pretty cool of them. Very cool. So it's it's kind of neat, you know. It's I got yeah. something that used to be somebody else's, but uh, those yeah, are awesome. my picks. For sure. Not as cool oh, as the, some of the fire you guys have. <laughs> well, we have somebody that could probably blow all of us out of the water combined. His name is Night Tiger. Hey, Night Tiger. What's going on? Hey, buddy. What's up? I'm watching on the TV, and then, okay, so hold on. Let me put this on the stand. Man, oh, I already see some bang. great books. I already yeah, see some great books. I, uh, <laughs> I promise you that wasn't me. He's going to show us like stuff from the golden age. like most. And Dude, he has like some of the most beautiful DC stuff I've ever seen. It's going like, to make my last three look like ass. <laughs> we're we're going to look <laughs> like... All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. No I'm worries. A for comparison. <laughs> Dang, look at that background. That is awesome, bro. Oh, holy crap. I just got two little cool <laughs> shells. Man, you got like 50. That is so badass. 
I think I just did an orgasm. I just oh, and the uh, Van Halen flag is cool too, I guess. I just <laughs> opened a box that came today. Major victory. Ooh, so, yeah. Wow. That glare is. What year? What, uh, yeah, I was going to say, what year is that? Uh, 45. Man. Good year for America. Dang, Bob's that glare. That's good. There yeah. you go. Wow. It's got a big. Somebody was hungry, though, right there. <laughs> That's very cool. Yeah. And then someone's. <laughs> This was sent to me by BWD Jesse Lynch this week. Oh, that is beautiful! Wow. Yeah, I can imagine my surprise. What? What? He also right underneath that. Let me get this book. Meanwhile, Chris we're just going to stare at your background. Yeah, we're just going to stare. I can just stare at this all day. I need oh to get a book out. Donald, what you sent me. Caroline, you like that. Whoa. Oh, oh yes, dang. Is, oh, I want those incredible. Wild. Oh my gosh, that is awesome. Right oh, around Sam. Who wrote who who drew that? Brent Bruner. Oh bro, he's the best at strange. Yeah, he is. Those Savage Hulk ones. That so um in that box I ordered from G D Comics. Yeah. This was another one. Wow. Oh, Nazi cut off. Oh, cool. oh I think I think I seen Man Man uh, Cave show one of these before. That is awesome. Nothing like punching that, a Nazi. And this was another one that came that I bought the same lot. What does that say? What does it stand for? Young Detective Tales, Young King Cole. Wow. <laughs> It's basically wow. a nothing book with a cool cover. Yeah, well, yeah, that's a cool cover. One other book that I grabbed this book that was in there. It's a uh, Silver Age. Maybe you'll appreciate it. I just thought it was cool. Millie, yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh huh. A new boss for Millie. Oh dear. It was cheap and it's in really nice shape. So I think yeah. I'll get that. That's great, dude. I'm, I'm a closet romance. <laughs> if they made um, Nancy Walker Hellcat, I'm just waiting for Millie to become somebody. Yeah. Get a whole comic smell. <laughs> oh, you want me to keep, you want me to keep going? Keep going, man. If you want. Absolutely. Okay. Th that it's one America. came in yesterday. Oh. yesterday. What number? 83. 83. What? Oh. That's insane. It's, uh, right on the cusp of the golden age. For me, I consider <laughs> the silver age to start when the code appeared on the book. Many people yeah. say many people say that 56, 57 is when it started, but not for me. The code the code kind of ruined comics for a couple of years. Yeah. Yeah. No werewolves, no vampires, no yeah. gangsters. Okay. Just sterilized them. But I like this because I always like the giant scenarios that Robin and when Batman and Robin are placing these giant <laughs> scenarios on the covers. That's nice. But then you're starting the next era is I call the gimmick Batman because they have all the different Batmans. Like here you got um, the duplicate Batman, the testing of Batman. So you got like all these gimmicks they start throwing throwing them through for the next I don't know how many years. Till Neil Adams saved them. Let me shut this light <laughs> off in the background. Neil Adams. I got this from Christmas present from Steve Codwell from I Love Disney and Comic. That's awesome. That is hot. That is a nice cover, man. Those For panel sure. covers. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. What's the date what stamp? I didn't know. It's May 26, 19, and then it's smeared. Main Street. I don't know. Zimbabwe. I don't know. Flip on the back. Does it show something on the back? Or did you write that? I wrote that. Oh, nerd. <laughs> I put the date. This one I got this year. Ooh. Nice. Oh, Ooh. Man. That's a sick book, man. I love my comic. The original plot. Captain Marvel. Yeah, Tony, didn't your neighbor give you like a Captain Marvel book or something? Yeah, Captain Marvel Mighty Midget number one. Oh, man. 
Canadian white comic. I got a three lot that I won on uh, eBay. I like that shark. I paid. I I thought it was a missile. (laughs) You thought it was a missile. I I thought it was a missile. I don't know why. You know, Tony, you are very creative. (laughs) (laughs) Why is he stabbing the missile? He must be holding on to the side or something. No, it's the shark. (laughs) Makes way more sense now. Tony was definitely the most talented in Lamer Frame. <laughs> that was a great episode. <laughs> My wife saw them was like, you drew those? Like, are you sure? That, that, that was you laughing are? so hard, dude. <laughs> Felt so bad for you. That's killer. That's killer. Great. Skull. I couldn't believe I won this book cheap. Wow. Holy skull, that is, man. The white on that really pops. It must be really like Really pristine condition. What year? Uh, 49. Oh, my. Wow. And it's still in that nice shape. So I won this for 40, and there's another one on eBay listed right now in a little bit less of a grade, and they want two grand for it. What? Wow. Two grand? And then, and then there's another one in a 1.8 on eBay, and they were asking like $300 for it. Wow. That is crazy. Yay. <laughs> oh. Awesome. Next days. I wish I could read that date. How stamp. to hold your breath underwater. Hang on, Millie. I'll save you. This is a, a Bonnets from Ohio bookstore, Dayton, Ohio. Sweet. I guess that I guess that's something. A lot of collectors know about the store. I don't know nothing about it. Hmm. That would probably yeah. be like right where my dad would have shopped when he was a kid. What was that? Is that like the hub of the comics, like in the seventies or something? I don't know. I've got. I heard a lot of people talk about it. That store has been around forever in Dayton, Ohio, or at least I know that my dad uh, used to frequent that place when he was a kid. And my dad, he's like in his seventies. I feel bad. I don't know how old my dad is. So this is one I picked up, but it's um, it shows Empire Comics stamped on it. You see, um, oh yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, Empire Comics, very cool. Yeah, and then it's inside on the sleeve too. Was it Empire? Didn't they do like uh, floors or something? Flooring, Empire, <laughs> Empire, Rochester, New York, Rochester. Yeah, okay. It's you know what's a shame is New York used to be like the epicenter of comic book stores and now they have barely any over there. Yeah, mm. everything's in Los Angeles now. When I went to New York a couple of years ago, I tried to track down some comic book shops and they were all they weren't even there. Mm-hmm. I just went down there to uh, Midtown in two thousand one. It was right after I graduated college. Before 9-11, after 9-11, and this was before I was picking up, you know, higher grade or uh, let's just call them blue chip books because up till that point, I was just picking up whatever was coming out on a Wednesday. I wouldn't pay more than 10, 20 bucks for a book. And I'm going, hey, wow, look, it's like, isn't this issue 14 of Amazing Spider-Man? How much is this? It's like $200. Like, this is in really nice conditions. Like, yeah, $200 is a steal. Like, $200 is a lot of money. Dumbass, you should have gotten it. <laughs> mm-hmm. well, I'll tell you my experience with Midtown. I went there and I was like, whoa, these prices are insanely high. So I went back to my uh, my in-law's apartment in the Bronx, ordered them online, and sent them to the store and went and picked them up. They were like, like what, 30% cheaper online than they were in the store. It's because the tourists <laughs> come crazy. in and buy comics from them. Dang. This is why it's so hard to go to a comic book store now to buy comics that are uh, older, because it's like they want their warehouse fee for holding on to it for so oh, many years. Oh, Buster! <laughs> Buster, so he's over here playing around on the table. He found a peanut from the pack, a packing peanut, and he's over here throwing it around like a hockey puck. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, Lady Fantastic, didn't you have number three? Um, yeah, so I can do that. Um, I want to show you, so Night Tiger actually sent me a really cool, like, 
um, AFK, like, yeah, I was looking picture. for that video. Um, yeah, yeah, so I just want, I put a lot of them up, but I want to show one that I had close, and it's just amazing. It's Captain America 138 with uh, Spidey, Spidey, which I think is awesome. So, when Spidey was cool, yeah. I read an issue of Spidey, I think, two months ago. I picked up a new issue. Oh, my God. It was so bad. It was just <laughs> so We're but, sorry uh, for Nick Spencer's run, too. But I just wanted to show that as part. And admit, but thank you so much. You gave me some really awesome books. Um, now, these are my number three. No, these are. this is number four because I still have three left. Yeah, I haven't shown my number four either. We're yeah, this four. is... This is my number four for the tw year of 2020. I got Fantastic Four number 13. That is sick. Second printing. And I think the second printing cover is way better than the first. Yeah, it is. So, so yeah, that's Bad Butt is one of my favorite pickups just in terms of the cover <laughs> for 2020. Poor Dan <laughs> <laughs> and um, then this was an AOK -okay from my buddy Tacoma. To give freeze. This amazing variant, co detached cover variant <laughs> of X Men 94. I love it and I'm so thankful for it. And so, yeah, I never oh, thought I would ever have this book. And, it, and he sent it to me. So, um, yeah, this, these are my number fours. Um, yeah, that much closer to your run of 94 through 300 plus. I just so that I mean, I'm very, yeah. very thankful and blessed, man. Just whew. this is why we love the comic community. I have my number uh one as an a okay, so I'll wait to get there. But I was dealing with that old comic smell because he said he had a stack of comic books that I'd want. And uh, this is on the top of the stack because it's issue number one because I got issues one through ten from him. This is issue one. Nice. Oh, baby. Finally got myself an Iron Man number one. Hell yeah. Now I have one through ten Iron and scattering through the hundreds. And then a pretty good chunk of like 100 on through. So Actually, I had just like two more. I don't know. I miscount it. I got a question. How no. do you guys know it? How do you narrow it down to 10 comics? It's not so easy. I keep going like, oh, I forgot about this one. Oh, I forgot about this one. So it's like. Insane, it's insanely impossible. Yeah. We just pick we just pick ten, but like then we then Rob and I go on on Fridays and Saturdays and just like show umpteen comics. Oh, I'm gonna pop off, guys. Oh, thank Ooh, you so much, Tony, for coming on. I'll see you in 2021. Yeah. Happy, 2020. Happy New Year! Happy yes. New Year! Happy New Year! Um, um, what's your name? Night Sh Night Tiger. Night Tiger. Um, yeah, or or Mike. I, yeah, or Mike. Uh, I thought we could be friends, and then I saw you were wearing a Packers hat. Uh, as, a, as a Viking, I can't. I can't, bro. <laughs> just a sports team. Just, yeah, I, just actually, sports I actually, sports in sports. my last video, I wore the the jersey too. Just to, <laughs> just, Jesse's from Minnesota, also. Oh, perfect, perfect. But uh, I'll see you all next year. Enjoy the rest of your week. <laughs> Peace all right. out. All right. So, uh, who's next? Kirk. Kirk. Kirk, how are you doing, man? He's a little frozen in time. Oh, no. Oh, there he is. Oh, and we got Ace. Yeah, my bad. My internet. Hello. Hello, Ace. My internet's acting so sorry. So do you, do you want to show something, Kirk? I do have something to show. Um, I just apologize for the internet. It's Ace. <laughs> it's me. Uh, this is not one book, but uh, a whole stack of books that I got from um, uh, Man Cave Comics. Shout out to Man Cave Comics. Uh, he gave me, he sent me an AOK, -okay, so I couldn't just show one of these books. I had to show the whole letter, the whole kit and caboodle. So um, he sent me this uh, Superman and Green Lantern. Oh, 
first appearance of uh, the new Teen Titans. Oh, nice. I, just, I, just, I just thought it was a really cool Superman cover. I always like <laughs> Superman getting, getting beat up. He's... <laughs> That's I just thought it was a good Superman cup. Yeah. It's terrible. <laughs> you actually read it really bad, but uh, the cover line, I like it. It's really good. Nice. Uh, here's a Strange Tales that he, he hooked me up with. Uh, I just, I love, you know, I'm a big fan of the the uh, the thing, good old Big Grim. So he also gave me a number, um, I think 124, but I I can't find it. But these are these are the this is the kitten caboodle right here, this Turok book he sent me. I just look at that beautiful cover, badass dude. Yeah, sure. And then he sent me um, this awesome Tales of Astonish. I'm working on this run, uh, fifty six on up to one hundred one. I have most of like ninety and a hundred, but uh. I did not have this one, and I like, but it kind of sucks because I can't read it though. But it's still, it's a <laughs> beautiful cover. Out, <laughs> I know. And put the uh, the the grade inside the sleeve. I could do that. I could do that. But uh, that's that's my number four. All right. Uh, hey Ace, how you doing? Yo Ace, how you doing? Yo Ace, how you doing? Horrible. Good. Do you have stuff to show tonight? Yeah, I pulled out a couple things. Okay, we have the next, the top three, so let's see what you have. So I have a signed copy of Drip Joint from Image. He yep. Frank signed it, and my babe. Nice. Is that yeah. a friend? Yeah. Okay. And then I have a signed copy of Hack and Slash that I won. Ooh. Ooh, and made me badass. happy. I love Hack and Slash. Badass. And I have this pretty Wonder Woman cover. Badass. That Joshua Middleton 756 killed me, dude. Yeah. Mm. And I have Harley that's signed by Jimmy and Amanda. And Found it for like two bucks, and that made me happy. Ooh. Unnatural, signed by Mirka and Dolph. I love that cover. So do I. Even if it's a pig girl. All girls are beautiful. Especially and pig girls. <laughs> this is from Wicked and Divine. That's my babe. I'm going to marry her one day. Sweet. And finally... The first hack and slash. Mm. One of this for like a decade. Finally found it and I cried. Hell yeah. <laughs> I've got. Stop showing my face. Oh, I thought you <laughs> I got. And I thought you were going like, to. Get off of me. <laughs> Go away. I know what that feels like. So number three, leading two, Lady Fantastic. So I was JKing. It's actually only number two. It's two. I was wrong. Two. <laughs> uh -oh. So this is number two for me. Um, pickup of the year, um, Strange Academy, number one. Right? Ooh, yeah. Not the is second that print, but, Yeah, that's huh? still an awesome cover. Yeah. It's also Humberto uh, Ramos, so... Um, where'd you, where'd you get that? I got that in an LCS, um, for, a uh, cover price actually oh, picked nice. up two of them. Yeah. I think I gave one to, I, just, I can't remember. I, I just sent one to Steve, the uh, oh, Walmart one. Yeah. I saw that it was awesome. Nice. <laughs> yeah. That was really nice of you. Um, and then, um, this was an AOK -okay best, uh, Bill Smallwood. Oh, nice. He gave me Ooh. Black Panther 2 first appearance of Shuri. Um, that is awesome. I blew my mind, dude. Um, and so uh, I'm so incredibly thankful. I'm like, the fact that 
my top 10 back issues have like three or four AOKs. It just, re it's a reflection of how kind and generous like this community is. Oh, and it's, yeah. you know, yeah, um, I agree. And I just can't, I can't be thankful enough. And, um, like again, Bill, uh, God, thank you. Um, he actually, guys, just sent me an updated list of books he's looking for. I can forward it to you guys, too. Yes, um, please. Yeah, but uh, he's working on cool stuff like um, uh, Excalibur and X-Force, like old school from, like, 90s and stuff. It's I have cool. a bunch of the Excalibur. So okay. I I'll send you what he sent me. Um, but anyways, that was um, – these are two, my um, – this is my back issue. Uh, this I can't – I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> my left and my right, I get them confused because it's the mirror image, and so I end up being ditzy. So that's number two, right? That's number two oh, for me. Uh, so I have to show my three and my two then. So, okay. I, so if that's your number two, uh, I I myself had three left over, so I'm just going to show my number sure, two are kind of equal because they're very similar. So I'm going to start with the first appearance of Silver Surfer oh, there we go. Cameo of Galactus. Uh, there's oh, no wow. It's high grade. Unfortunately, somebody did take a little bit of tape to it right there. Uh, that could probably come off. Unfortunately, somebody did take a marker and did little tap, tap, tap. I'm like, oh, I don't think that'll come off. Uh, but have you... Then, have you have you attempted the tape removal yet? yet? Not yet. Uh, that's going to require a heat gun that I still need to order off of Amazon. But right. Make sure you don't drink any coffee or anything right before you do that. <laughs> My hand needs to be absolutely steady. Show us some stuff, Mike. Coffee. Now, I also picked this one. Nice. This this would be my number one, but I got an A-OK. -okay. It, it's not worth like as much as this is, but when you see what my A-OK -okay that I got from Steve Whiting is, you'll see it why it's my number one. But this, otherwise, I picked up from the garage sale guy from earlier this year, picked up a bunch of great stuff from him, sending a bunch of great stuff to all my people on the show. Uh, and, uh, well, Steve Whiting, I'm going to need to... Find out what he likes, so I can find something almost as good as what he did. Because yeah. this, is so we, maybe we can yeah. combine our powers and and because he's he's a okayed me a couple great things too. So here, what is your number two? My I actually have to show my number three and then my number two. But here's that here's that cover I was telling you. Adam Bashir stuck in a black hole, yes. and he's out. He's honestly stuck. He's stuck. He's stuck in there with another Doctor Do not Doom, but uh. Dr. Octopus from another dimension. So, or another reality, sorry. Uh, but my number my number three is um, a book that I bought off a homie um, before it blew up to the price it is at now. Um, I bought this for less than 100 bucks, and I'm very happy with it. Um, but it's Ultimate Fallout number four. First appearance wow. of uh, Miles Morales. Yeah, I didn't. He he always messages me like, "Dang, dude, this book keeps going up in price. I really regret selling it. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm, I won't. If it makes you feel any better, I won't, I don't want to sell it. <laughs> but it's a really good cover, uh, copy to have. Uh, really great condition. I really appreciate appreciate you, G Easy, my brother. If you're watching this, um, it's beautiful man. That uh, that book is so iconic. It's got to the level where you don't even need to say what it is. You just show it. Yeah, and, you and people know. know. Yeah. I totally agree. Um, but my number two is another is a Fantastic Four book, just like Rob. It's not number 40, uh, 48, but it is number 46, first appearance of Black Bolt. Once again, I'm a huge Inhumans fan, and I was super happy to grab this book uh, this nice. year. So first Black Bolt, awesome to have. Um, my number two, and Kurt. back to you. <laughs> Kirk, it's a great issue, and guess what? I don't have it either. <laughs> so you... <laughs> All right, the number one book, Lady Fan. Oh wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. You gonna let Mike show show some books? 
Ooh, you have more books. Oh, I think I have a few. Dude, he always up, has more books. He's crazy. Oh, books. I picked up two copies of this this year. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, nice. And I just nice. traded one with some cash to a certain Simon Comics for an Avengers 4, which is coming. Oh, Awesome. Yeah, I never thought I'd own that book, but he had it for sale and he made me a deal. I got I got a grail this year. I was after this book at the right price and the right right grade, so I picked up a four point five for sixty dollars. Very cool. Perfect. The only reason I got it so cheap is they sent it to the wrong buyer. Interesting. Oh. <laughs> so they said they take some money off when I and I still got a, a good deal on it. And my wife said, "Tell them to take twenty five dollars more off of it." So I went from eighty five to six to sixty. Your wife is smart. Yep. <laughs> I'm gonna do two. I'm gonna do two more because I don't. I have way more than ten, but I I don't pick up modern books or variants. But I did pick up this one this year. Ugh. Oh, <laughs> nice. That's not I the best. Up, it's a crazy. I picked, the, I picked up the Starlight also, but it's yeah. it's already far yeah. away. Starlight, I thought, was the best. Yeah, but. I like the Starlight better, but this seems to be the more popular book. I don't know why. Yeah, I mean, it's still awesome. Everyone's okay, and Homelander. Last, last in my turn for number two, I this is my first EC horror book. Complete. I have a cover list that I have ever that I have ever owned, and I won an auction for one hundred dollars on this baby. Ooh. Wow, yeah. that's beautiful, dude. Tells of tension. So, and whoa, tradition. Happy, so happy to happy to own this. That's beautiful, man. I love it. What year? Uh, 54, right on the cusp of the golden age. Yeah. Wow, that's only my appearance. 56, when he's, he retooled and, and did the impact and the MD and the psychosis books, trying wow. to save face, but they just wanted Bill Gaines out of the industry at that point. So, wow. So that's my number twos, let's say. All right, sweet. <laughs> so well... Come. Number one. Number one. Um, I don't know if you guys heard uh, about this one series this year called Thor, but it's apparently kind of a big deal. And um, I think I it was. You may have heard of it. Um, and so this is the issue. Thor number two. He is a herald wow. of Galactus. I think this has one of been been one of the hottest books of the years, number two and number five. Yep. But this remains my favorite by far. Um, so that's the 2020 pickup of the. Uh, well, it's not really like, but it's one of my favorites of this year, moderns. And then, so what's, what's the history? How did you get a cover price or tray or this one? I couldn't find it, and I think that. Uh, Super Russ actually bought a copy for me off eBay and said, hey, this is an A-OK. -okay. It's easier Aww. than me coming to pack something up and send it to you. That's an awesome think, dude. Yeah, because I had mentioned it just being like miffed because it was so hot, uh, hot at the time. Right. And he just randomly did that. And it was just really, really kind and uh, unexpected. So actually, this is this is an AOK. -okay. So there yeah. you go. Yeah, and then um, finally, this one's not an AOK. -okay. This is my pickup of the year back issue. This was one that I worked on, and that I'm proud of getting, um, and that I've been wanting. And it is X Men. Yeah. Oh yeah. I remember. When, I remember before you had that book, and you were saying. I'm saving up my money. I'm going to get it. I did. I did it. Yeah, I was so happy when I saw you post it. Yeah, so, you know, um, Jay Hood Creative, um, I, uh, he, he had a couple of them he was trying to sell. 
Um, he gave me a, a great deal. And like, you know, I paid him in chunks of like 50 and 75 bucks at a time. And, you know, within a couple of months, you can get it. Just saying, nice. you know, just uh, there's really good people out there. And they know that if you if you care about a book or something and you have an established relationship, you know, they'll work with you and stuff. You know what I mean? Yep. I think there's going to be a special place in heaven for all the comic book community members. Uh, you know. I think that we just care. It's it makes you know if you have a book that you don't care about, but you see it makes somebody else like squee in their eyes. Like it's much more rewarding instead of having it to put it in their hands. Like that's exactly, cool. you know what I mean? I got, Even when it's a book that you care about, sometimes you just give it to somebody else. If that's you like the history it away. It's, sometimes it's just another thing in our collection, and with the monkey spear, you can like one thing, you can like five things. After you're around like at 10,000, 20,000, you're like, Yeah, I can let like one or two slide. But what if it's a big book? It's just another book after a while. Give it to someone that it'll make them happy. Like yep. this comes down, up. comes down yeah. to paper and ink. I remember when he sent you that one. <laughs> so this comes from Steve Whiting. Uh, yeah. Some people might remember way back at the end of last year, uh, I wound up getting into a bit of a tiff with my former LCS because they just wanted to go, hey, look, a back issue that you pulled out. Well, let me take a look and see what Key Collector says. Let's see what Key says. Let's see what eBay says. Oh, well, it says eBay says this is a $270 book. It's not near mint. And that's kind of where the, the, the name was coming from in my head to make this show. Because uh, it was constantly like that with this guy. So finally, I just went, you know, there's other places to get this book. And he's like, well, I sell to real collectors. <laughs> yeah. Thank I, you. I'm out. <laughs> okay. And uh, it became to an increasing level of passive aggressiveness until I went, ah, I'm finding another comic shop. I'm yeah. out of here. And uh, since then, I was like, you know what? I don't want to think about this book too much. I'm associating bad things with it. And then uh, Steve Whiting and I were supposed to meet each other this year at Megacon. But then yes. it happened. So one day, out of the blue, I go to open my mail. And the week prior, I had my dog, Hazel, who seems to love eating packages. And she kind of was known on the one that had my past or my days of future present past that was sent to me. It was still in great condition. So when this was taught, yeeted into the yard, and I grabbed it away from Hazel because Hazel was about ready to grab it. I come inside, open it, and oh my God, it's the book. So this, this I love even more than this because, yeah, I might have paid for this. I might have found this at a good price, but this was one of those, it re. It made me like comic books again. It made me not feel like everything was just a giant battle against other people for something over prices. It was a real love of community. It's uh, about the people that love this stuff, really actually read it. It's not just about, hey, let me grab that so I can press it and flip it and get the most amount of money. No, I just love having the stuff. It's about the history. Look how much I have. It's not like I sell most of this almost ever. Isn't that right? Ah, uh, comics on the mind. <laughs> I know. Comic book. <laughs> Smoking like a true comic book junkie. Very true. Um, I I think everything you said, Rob, everything you said, Lady, like resonates with me, like especially with this number one book that I bought the show. Um, uh, Death of this person. Uh, I didn't think I was gonna get this this book. Um. Uh, this book was A-OK -okay uh, to me from uh, Dusty Brick Brown, a.k.a. Al. Um, he's a great dude in the community. Um, and I was going through this A-OK, -okay and it was already like, oh, my gosh, so many great uh, X-Men books. Like, you gave me the first appearance of Havoc. I'm like, holy crap. Um, and then I saw this book, and it was just like a grenade was dropped. I'm just walking in a day. Is like, do I really have this book? Is this really in my collection now? Because if you know me, I love obscure characters. I love 
characters that nobody really jump on and like like Pup from Alpha Flight and you know Ben Grimm. Uh, or Wonder Man. Uh, right. So uh, I'm for those that don't know me, I'm collecting the first 100 uh, Avengers book and Wonder Man and issue number um, eight, First King to Conquer, like some of the top books that I've always wanted to have. And this was on the bottom of the AOK, and I was just I was blown away. Like holy crap! Like is this really happening? Do I own this book? And it's just sh- like you know what everybody was saying, just to, back, to piggyback, like, it just shows you the kindness that's that exists, not just in this community, but, you know, in humanity. It, just, it showed, because, you know, I don't, I, don't know, I don't know about a lot of other people, but for me, like, I have trust issues, and, you know, this community has really helped me gain a lot of that trust back, you know, and just feel comfortable, like, and he didn't have to give me this book. He just It was just in his collection, but he knew that I was a huge fan and he just gave it out, you know, out of the kindness of his heart. So it's like, you know, that's why I love this community. You know, it's, it's not, comic books are just the, you know, the conversational part of it. Like, you know, we bonded, you know, beyond that. So I really appreciate you, Dusty Brick. I appreciate all you guys, um, like really much. Um, yeah, this is awesome. It's awesome, but <laughs> during this year, we wound up having to go. Okay, we we don't have any new comics to get at the shop anymore. Oh shit! Now we can't even go to a comic shop. No, nope. and now we're stuck with all these things to actually finally read and consume. And then, well, now we ran out of things to read. So now, what do we do? Jump onto the YouTube and talk to each other about the things we just read because. Who do we yeah. have in our real, regular lives that we can talk to about this? Yeah. Or rather, how many people do we have in our real, regular lives that we can talk to about yeah. this that are somewhat sane and we can talk to and not go, oh, you're a little bit cringy? Yeah, 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 I, I agree. Like, one of my roommates are in the comic book, so it kind of helps. Uh, but yeah, you're right. Like, there's not a lot of people around me in my group of friends that'll, like, are just the people around me in general that are like, uh, you know, understand, you know, the, the jokes of, from, you know, comic books that we, you know, we would understand and get, you know. I think like this, this year has been um, a very psychologically um, trying year for everybody, even if you haven't gotten sick or whatever for Americans, mm-hmm. you know, um, because just of the so- social. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. The social isolation. And I think that like, the one thing that this has done, this community has helped people create um, a net of friendship where um, you don't feel alone. And that yeah, is um, more valuable than the books themselves. Um, that making that connection and just being buddies with people that you, you know, you never knew would you'd be buddies with. I never knew I'd be buddies with night tiger, but he's a cool dude and he likes cool books and, you know, it's it's fun. Trading stuff is fun. It's just yeah, yeah. I agree. You know, and we're all from different parts from around the country. I'm in here in Miami. You're over in Tennessee. You're over in Oakland, California. Down there, you're from uh, Virginia. I can't remember where Night Tigers from off the top of my head. Florida, Ocala, Florida. Florida. Also Florida. Another Florida. Oh, nice. I'm sorry. <laughs> Two Florida men in here, so uh, hopefully neither one of us do anything to make the news. We still have a couple days left. I'm actually wanting to do a new um, part on my show. I'm going to do a little animation and have the ego booze. That'll so, be awesome. But I wanted, to, I wanted to talk about Lady Fantastic for a minute because I think if there was a fifth or sixth or seventh member of the Fantastic Four, it will be her. She helped me get my Defenders number one. I looked for that book for many, many years to get it at a good price, you know, not to overpay or not to whatever. So she got it for me and we did trade and it's up on my wall right now. Oh, you got me Invaders too. She got me Invaders number one also. So kudos to her. Yeah, she's, she's a fantastic lady. I got one request though, Caroline. Put up a huge poster behind you on the wall, please. (laughs) <laughs> okay i will like i have this thing that's from india that's like right Ooh. here that hangs down i could put it sideways and it would be really pretty i'll do that cool. how about a nice sherry poster or something a cherry poster no sherry 
Like Shuri. Shuri. Like Shuri? Oh, Shuri, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Do it, Sherry. A -S like S-H-E-R-R-Y. I'm like, like three that? Sherrys. <laughs> Hold on. Shuri. The Miss Night Tiger we're talking about, did he also mean Cherry Pop-Tart? Exactly. Uh, I'm like, there's so uh, many things. Um, I, did, gee, I, have I don't think I've ever eaten one of those. I have um, a print. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay, I'll put something uh, okay, up because okay. it's like I have artwork and everywhere else, but it is like this one is barren and it's like it looks like I live in just like a white room, but I don't. <laughs> in my universe, that is the is it, Isn't there a song by Eric Clapton? Something about thing. a white room? In a white room. That's the thing that I could churn rectangularly. And put it on. But, I um, could fill that room with so many comic books, but then again, no, it makes me look like I'm nothing. We need we need a Lady Fantastic comic book room tour. I can do that. I need to do that. Um, that be cool. It's basically I don't. It's like so. This is room. It's not like an. It, it's not like a separated room, but it's like this side of the room. I have like an industrial level, like table that can hold like so many pounds or whatever that I got off Amazon and I've just got long boxes lined up on it. And so, and I know what's in each box, I have them divided. And so it's like, because I have that photographic memory or whatever, um, like when I play comic gories and I just go right to it, I know, I know where my stuff is. I got to have control. I got to know where it's at. Hey, I think the, my photograph memory went years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I think I having know. photographic memory usually just applies when you actually care about something because almost immediately after you've remembered it within a day or so, it's gone. Yeah. So like in science, I always did better by, cause I could remember the, the um, like the graphs, if it showed like a protein complex or something, I would be able to like reimagine that in my head and be like, okay, got it. Like it's a spatial thing. So spatially, like I know where my books are. That's what I'm trying to see. All right. Have we made things awkward and quiet enough? <laughs> <laughs> uh, because I know that Comics on the Mind does need to bounce in just a little while. Uh, so I did drop the link in the chat if anybody wanted to come on, or we could wrap this up early tonight. No, let's go. Let's go. I'm having fun. Oh, I love <laughs> I've been awake way too long. <laughs> Well, I had fun, man, and it was really cool. Like, Ace, do you have any other comics that you'd like to show us? Let's see. Yeah, hold on. We did, did we do number ones yet? We just um, did. I just I only did my number one, I think. Oh. I did, I did my number one, too. Me, too. Right. Okay, so oh. then Ace, show us, yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. Mike, you can show us, too, after Ace. Sorry, we got to right. save you for last, Santa Claus. All right, so it's not worth shit, but I like it, and that is the variant to the vein number one, which is one That's of my cool. favorite comics of the year, and I love it so much. Sweet, sweet. You're, edu you're educating me. I don't I know nothing about these. Oh, okay. This is a series about lesbian vampire Nazi hunters. <laughs> wow, that's a mouthful. Yes. <laughs> <I love it. laughs> And then, um... Because why wouldn't there be? <laughs> exactly. And then, Ghost in LA, number 12 variant. I really like this, because it has some details in the eyes that relate directly to the plot, and then it makes me happy. And I'm too tired and lazy to get up and grab more things. Oh, so, that's I'm all. Those were still pretty good things. Yeah. Oh, now, what's, uh, what's the publisher on that? What's the publisher? Um, boom, and then the vein is from Ani Press. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, boom is boom is booming right now. Show my okay. face. All right, Night Tiger. All right, Night Tiger. What you got? What you got? What you got? Oh, well, you talked about AOKs, and this was a book I just never thought I'd go after because it's so expensive. But Man Cave. Sent it to me, and it was the only time I ever cried on camera. Oh no! no way! Holy oh, crap! I cried too. <laughs> I know. That's so awesome. 
Don't you have like a busted up copy, like a really busted up copy? I actually had a chance to buy like a 1.5 for 20 bucks, and I, and there was a half price sale the next day, so I hid it in the back issue bin, and when I came in the next day, it was gone. Oh, dang. Oh. Show your staples a little closer to the camera, because I don't know what it is about DC back at that time, but your staples look really good and line up with a book. Hey, Night Tiger, those are some hot staples. <laughs> no, I say that because, okay, so here's my copy, and my staples are like almost a quarter inch in the book. Like this one down here is like way over here. Oh, it's a color. Um, What's so like, you have like a much better framed book. Right. Tacoma. <laughs> Tacoma, I th there's like two, two or three AOKs in my top 10. <laughs> from you. <laughs> I was going to show, this is um, some stuff I got from Jesse yesterday. I, I put a, I did a video on it. I just saw Chris Reed show that, Reed Comics 81, and I thought, oh man, I don't think I'll ever get that. Well, uh, Anybody ever watched the black and white serials, westerns, where they had the guy with the helmet in the cave, like the villain? I've never seen that one. My mom used to watch a bunch of westerns. I watched uh, Gunsmoke and Bonanza. And then, nice. And, the, and my first uh, Lone Ranger with, with the red shirt. Before, he sent yeah. me that also. Before he turned, changed awesome. to blue. That's awesome. And he also sent me this on another one. <laughs> nice. Oh, yeah. Hey, will you show you um, back <laughs> Hey Mike, will you so, show so Southern right? Comic Geek um, the old the uh, Batman and detectives you got? Oh yeah, uh, he'll like them. Oh, this one. Yeah, ninety six. Um, where's that Batman at? The other one was an eighty three, I think. See, I remember the number. I can't help it. Ooh. Isn't that great? And you said oh, that's pre-code or cuspy? Yeah, this is pre-code. There's no code on it. I don't like buying uh, coded stuff on eBay. I'd rather find that at the shops or at the flea market. Why? Because it, you, it's easier to find there. And I get a better deal. When you start buying Silver Age and copper and, and bronze and modern on eBay, you rarely get a good deal these days, the way the market's going. Yeah. So I was yeah. looking for yeah. the Golden Age stuff. I mean, this is a book I got for $10 on eBay. It's a $200 book. Jeez. Because people Ooh, don't know what they've got in their hands. Yeah, he, he didn't know what he had. I actually sent a package to um, Tom Ryan, three issues of Magic Comics, and UPS, um, one of the workers, stole them. Wow, no way. I'm trying to get my money back right now. Rob and I, I had an cool. incident like that. Yeah. But I sent them to his dad. His dad, his, dad likes, his dad likes Blondie, and this is a big Blondie, early Blondie title. Mm -hmm. And they were Blondie covers. And yeah, that someone stole them. Sucks. Earlier this year, uh, I went to go put together a nice big box of comics. And it was the same box that Lady Fantastic and I were sending back and forth to each other. And when she received this box, uh, take it away, lady. What happened? I don't it was know. just like it was just like part of the box, and there was nothing in there. It was just like literally like part of the box. I got delivered part of it. Empty box. They got it. They got it. The comic books out basically. They opened up like the side of the box. They cut out the side and then just sent her the rest of the box and then said empty contents and stamp that. Oh my god! Like, why would you even deliver that? I know exactly. I uh, so I sent out my prize packages in the same envelope, but this time I taped the crap out of them. Same. I just tape the s the crap out of mine now. I get it, but anyways, yep. And everybody seemed to get them all, so I'm happy with that. I, but I try not to use UPS anymore. Well, what I learned is don't send media mail because they're allowed to open that shit up. Yeah. Wow. And comics. I right? just I just sent that detective to uh, Jesse, and I put insurance on it this time. I paid the extra money. Yeah. 
and took pictures and and uh the lady that was really good she she put all the description of the contents she that's goes, awesome. take a picture make sure you have a receipt yeah and, uh, I was like, man, I was like, thank you for, you know, for telling me I, I should know this common sense, but you don't go in there and do it. You just package up something and you send it. Yeah. Yeah. You got to really doc. You got to document everything now. I, I'm documenting everything I send from now on. Well, and also like, I think Rob mentioned this, but like take pictures of your collection mm -hmm. just in case something happens. Cause then it's like proof of ownership. And like, if you have a random fire, like, you know what I mean? Yeah, just take a picture of your background, kind of like I have now. And if somebody winds up coming in, it only takes just that. And a stack shows up somewhere. You can go, are they these? And they go, yeah, yep. they're all of those, yes. Or they could go, hell no, they're none of those. Yeah. Well, the police aren't going to go, yeah, we're keeping this for myself. Maybe one or two would be a comic fan, but they're not going to do that. I don't know. I have a mail delivery guy I think is doing that or has done it. Tried to do it. I put my neck on. I, this was one of my grails, and it was lost in the mail for over a month. God, I didn't think I'd ever get it back. It's a 1937 Popeye comic. That's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. And uh, they said deliver to my house. I went in there, and then they pulled out the GPS coordinates. Oh, no, he delivered it down the road. But it says they delivered it to your house. Called Washington, got a investigation going. Got one going there. They still wouldn't do anything. I went there every week, put my uh, boot on the neck of those people, and uh, it just uh, showed. Okay. It, it showed up one day. My wife goes, "You got a package." I was on the road. I'm like, "I'm not expecting one." Yeah. She opens it up and she goes, "It's a King Comics." I'm like, "No." So I, I almost pulled over and got on my knees and thank the Lord. Hi, Tacoma. Hey, Tacoma. <laughs> What's up, Tacoma? <laughs> oh, it's it's you, it's 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 there's no party of you that says you're on, man. I was just like, I had no way of like, you. Yeah, yeah, I'm over here like, Shh. yeah. We were trying to see how long it would last. So, Rob, did you get my message on IG? Show us. Oh, let me, uh, in a moment, I got to go show them. Hold on a second. They're over here. Okay. Well, nice. um, let's see. I, you know, um, D uh, Steve Caldwell, I love Disney. He said Instagram is my insurance claim, I guess. And I mean, he makes a good yeah, point. There you go. Yeah. Oh, Rob, do you have your list out of uh, DC Universe? Do I? Uh, yeah. No, but I have the box over here. Let me go take out the box. By moving the bear. Hi there. Do you collect those, Mike? What's that? DC uh, Universe variants. Uh, I do if I find them. I have the refrigerator body one from Green Lantern. That's okay. the only one I know I have. Okay. That's what I mean. They're hard to they're hard to collect because when you go through the back issue bin, you got to pull them all up to look at the yeah, bottom. Exactly. But can you think of anything exciting to do? Then go through back issue bin and be like, obviously, I enjoyed it. This. You gonna make me big? Uh, just a second. I just wanted to show this. So Anthony Sika, who's gonna be on next week, he sent me an original drawing, oh, and sweet. I'm gonna have to get this framed. So that when he's on next week, uh, as good I don't as think he's watching right now. So I'm gonna get that framed so he'll see that when he's on here next week. But let me dig out these books. They're right here. Oh man, I'm going to have so many books that I need to put away at the end of tonight. <sighs> That's what it's all about, brother. Mm -hmm. You don't realize it's like chaos. OCD. The live stream afterwards, OCD. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> me doing two in the morning, putting shit away. I do the so same I thing. I do the same thing there. Oh, all right, go ahead. Oh, wow. All right, do you have this one? What number? Battle. This is uh, Detective Six Seventy, and all of these I got. I got to get the price tags off of, but I. You should uh, make a Tacoma big. Oh yeah, let me do that. Why am I not doing that? Are, okay. those, are you going to be able to get those price tags off? Oh yeah, especially I, from this. This uh, until they went glossy, it's pretty easy to get the price tags off. Once they got glossy, 
you got to be really careful because it's so easy to pull the ink off. Right. But yeah. with you, I've got like a 90% success rate of not ruining the books. Um, cool. Do you need that one? I do. Okay. What about Superman Man of Steel number 29? Man of Steel. I don't have any Man of Steel. <laughs> oh. Well, I, I did you get my last A okay? Because I think there's some in there. Um, I have the action comics, action comics, adventures, adventures. Oh, okay. so, let me ask you a question. Is there a checklist somewhere on how many there are? There are so many. <laughs> I know you've got one of the time and tides. Do you have number one? I gave uh, that to him. I have that for him. Okay. So oh, I gave that for me? Do you have this one with Catwoman beating up this punk, and the bandana, and the studded uh, jacket? I only have Catwoman 6. Okay, well, this is Catwoman 5, which apparently I didn't put the second one down. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, um, by the way, there's a different – it's not DC Universe, but there's another one where they have, like, a smaller box down here, and it just says DC. With like, like they're, Apparently, they were packs at a – I don't know. Somebody said they're a different type of variant. Of variant. This is uh, Superman in Action Comics 695. Also in this ish, Lobo appears on one page. <laughs> one page. So thrilling. I do not have that one. All right. And this is. Oh, wait. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm, I'm dumb. <laughs> there oh. you go. You do yeah. have that one. Okay. So you have logo on one page too. This was the only thing I bought today from Half Price Books that is was not 50 Cent, is not DC Universe. Is it number one? No. Do you need number one? No. What number is that one? Seven. It just looks like a one. I think seven. I've got seven. This is probably my favorite cover that I've never seen. Oh, that is badass. Look at that, man. It is totally like the best new. Christmas cover ever. <laughs> I've never seen this ever. I, I never knew this existed, but I'm so diehard. This do, do you need this one? I only have number yes. 86, so that is a yes. You got it. All right, so starting another box for Rob. Oh, no. With four comics. There you go. Glad to be of service. Thank you. So okay. having, showing uh, Night Tiger is away from his computer. That means Ace. Ace, do you want to show Garnet? Um, sure. Hi. Can you oh. get up for a second? Can you get up? Oh. <laughs> this is show and tell, and it doesn't have to be about comics. Sometimes it's about <laughs> your puppies. She's sleepy. And super like, cuddly. He's like, what are you doing? Why are you doing this to me? <laughs> she does not want to be Don't disturbed. embarrass me. <laughs> How old is she? She's three and a half. Oh, oh she's such a big girl. We yeah. got two, two puppies for fostering that we're, we're giving to another foster family tomorrow. But uh, we have fun with them over break. They're laying there curled up with each other right now. They're cute. They shit cute. everywhere. They shit everywhere. Yeah. Every Hello, babies. Familiar with that. Every morning we wake up and it's like, okay, throw them in the cage, clear the floor. Uh -huh. There you go. Good it's night, night. Yeah, Tacoma, Good I'll show you um, my top 10 or whatever. In them, there were like two books you gave me. Ooh. One was she won Miss Marvel number one, and one is X Men 94. Yep. You're so smart. Yeah. I know. Are you so far smart? <laughs> I'm here whenever it's my turn. Just let me know. All right. Sweet. Oh, there you are. Actually, I have to have you guys. Unfortunately. All right, dude. Be safe. Right. You have Happy anything? New Year. Hey, uh, so comments on the mind. Are you going to be doing Gorilla Todd's tomorrow? I don't know. Um, I will let you guys know tomorrow because um, I know that's New Year's Eve and I, I will be working that 
that day and night. So that's up in the air. Maybe it's a maybe, definitely. But um, yeah, I don't. I don't think I have anything else planned uh, coming up this week. Not to, not to my knowledge. Uh, um, yeah, but to be to be announced, to be continued. Stay tuned um, for twenty twenty one. Right. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you again, Tacoma. I really appreciate it. I was trying to show you in the background. Like, <laughs> so the reason yeah. I got those I, it. was just so I could get this uh, one. Right? This was the variant to five. Oh. Right? And I really wanted this. Oh, no way. No right? way. Like, that is so badass. Yeah. And then I had those, that and I'm is, like, "That is a bad. Idea. I've never seen that cover before." <laughs> yeah, so I, I, Mike Rogers had one on his Steals and Deals show, but I lost out to a higher bidder, so I went and looked on eBay and, oh. and got the whole set. And those were sitting there for like six months. I'm like, oh, "I'm going to read these. I'm going to read these. I'm going to read these." And of course, I never got around to reading them. Then you're like, "Oh, I want those." I'm like, "Yeah, you have them, man. Somebody needs them because I'm not reading them." So. <laughs> There you go. Yeah, I, and I, I, but I went and found the, the regular number five to complete the set because since I took this one. Yeah, well, I was I was mentioning earlier I have I have number one and two, but I have like variants of them. So I've never seen the what the the regular covers look like. So I was like oh, excited yeah. when I saw them. <laughs> I know uh, there's some there's other tie-ins like uh, I don't know if it's inhumanity or inhumans. Um, uh, are all new in humans? I can't remember. What There's the, a lot of the tie-ins in are, but yeah, that whole run. Yeah, 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 the death of X. I love death of X. Just seeing like uh, Cyclops get obliterated by uh, mm -hmm. Black Bolt was it was awesome. And then to come and find out he was already dead, it was just like, oh come on. <laughs> oh, lady. But I appreciate you coming. Like, before uh, we find out. Oh, <laughs> Uh, do you want to do a show on Friday where we're showing all the extra stuff we're getting? Yeah, I'm down. All right. Have more so stuff. We show on Friday. <laughs> on fantastic channel where I get to show all this. She shows her stuff, and we just show more stuff from the uh, spillover from this episode. Um, so, Mike or Tacoma um, or Ace, do you got? Well, Ace has her pup she's showing, but Mike or Tacoma, you guys want to show some more? Sure. All right. Is that what we do? Oh, wow. wow. Literally, wow. <laughs> wow. The one seller has four of these on way under retail. I grabbed every one of them. Nice. This is like a this is a thousand dollar book. I got Mr. it for a hundred and pinky. Wow. I think it's first appearance of him. Very cool. So that's number four from nineteen forty one. Wow. Sweet. The number um, six. Geez. From 1942. First appearance of Commando Yank and Phantom Eagle. These books are huge. I mean, they're wide. Yeah. This is when you got the most out of your dime. They were like a real magazine. And then uh, 36. Ooh. 1945. Nice. Mary. Yeah, she's gorgeous. Lady uh, Shazam. All four, 47. <coughs> from 1940. All I'm those so were from the same seller. And they're all they're all in really, really, really high grade. I mean, not really high grade, but they're in high grade for our Golden Age books. And then this one I picked up. Uh, I couldn't pass on an auction. Oh, nice. Number forty-three, lovely cover, floating head. And then for their time. One more. I have one more. I just bought it for twenty eBay. Oh, here it is. Really low grade, but for twenty bucks. Number twenty. Stellar. I do it. Stellar. I cleaned it up a little yeah. bit. I don't think I can do much with the press, but I, I cleaned up the whites and the yellows the best I could. The spot that's on the W, is that just on the ink? Uh, I don't know what that is. It, it looks like it might be a, manu a mis or manufacturer or something. I don't, it's just a perfect circle. Yeah. 
I don't, I don't know if it's like a marker just going like, okay. We only got only you topic. would see that. I didn't see that. It's like the red dot in Seinfeld on the cashmere sweater. <laughs> well, I got earlier today a Superman uh, that with the two L's on it. The uh, I think it's like a two hundred four. Hold on, let me see. Pull that out. Move, Keith. And they're and they're on fire. Yeah. Am I still going? Yeah. Ooh. Like Another Canadian man. white I picked up this year. Really high grade, too. The best thing about auctions on eBay is if you can win them at a decent price, you can get some books that are worth a lot of money for pennies on the dollar. This book is like a $400 book I got for like 50 bucks. Uh, hey, Mike, Bill Smallwood's asking you a question. He said, do you know how much a major in a pack is worth? Number one is worth. Um, um, a what? A major I N A P A K. I don't know what that oh. is. I, maybe it could be a different. He, he he may have misspelled something. Major in a pack. Is that? I don't know if he's referring to Captain. No, that's Captain Victory. I don't know what that means. How much a major in a pack number one is? Let's see. Free code number 13, which is appropriate number for an issue like this. Yeah, major. I had this, this What is it? It's major in a pack, the Space Aids, 1951. Oh. In the far off future of 1951. Yeah, those are, those are not worth a lot because I think there was a warehouse find on those in the 80s. There's a lot of those. I, I found a high grade one for five dollars at a flea market. I know who he's talking about now. You can find them everywhere. So I think there was a warehouse find on those comics. Yeah, it says on. Um, I'm looking at uh, Amazon, and it says that you can find one used for eight dollars. Yeah, I thought it was something when I found it. I'm like, I can't believe this thing's five dollars. It's it's uh, 1955 and. It wasn't until later when I started becoming a connoisseur, I guess you would say, that I realized that there's just so many of them out there. So, yeah, like that, like that Wally Wood issue from that mm -hmm. he did for the army. Mm -hmm. It was a warehouse find on those. You can find them in high grade. Or that Green Llama, like issue five or something. Really? I want one of those. <laughs> But there's a green issue. It was like a Christmas issue. Uh, it's one where it, it was a warehouse find. Somebody found like 300 or 500 copies, and they were all in high grade. Um, but I'm sure I'm sure those go for a little bit of money, though. Tacoma. Yes, ma'am. What can I do for you? Show us what, some magic. I will show you what I just picked up today. That, in true Tacoma fashion, I already have so i'm going to have to get rid of which i don't think will be too hard and when you see what it is you will realize why i took the gamble on buying them oh yeah that? Oh, cool. one two three four five now this is one of those ones where I was making a point the other day, and I just put it away, but the second printing to this takes all these blues out of it and makes such a better looking cover when it's just like a stark background. Like they just add too many colors to these, but I digress. Six, <laughs> seven, which is that awesome, awesome issue where uh, Ben is, is trying to defend young, like 10 year old Luke on Tatooine, and Uncle Owen's like, get the fuck out of here. And he's oh. like, respect the boy. Um, really, really cool issue. He, it's just a pound drunk Ben Kenobi. He really is, man. Nine, which is the first Gracchus the Hut. Ten, which is the first somebody. Eleven, which is a great little uh, Dengar and Chewie going at it. <laughs> Zelf, when I went to Switzerland as a teenager... We reveled in the fact that there were like Swiss German pronunciations of 12 and German pronunciations of 12 and Swiss pronunciations of 12. And it just got fun to say Zvelf 
over and over and then, you know, be a, a snotty American who mispronounced it because I was 14 and didn't know any better. I like that one. Look behind you. It's Vader. <laughs> what do we got? 14, Black Kurz. I think I always say Black Kurzakstan, but it's like Black, Black Karsten or K A A R S T A A N or something. And Chewie going at it. The only known um, Wookiee uh, bounty hunter. And then this here's another one from the diary of of, of uh, another one from the diary of Ben Kenobi. And I love this because he's got the, the gaffy stick. Or he's got like this the long range rifle. Really cool. Um, Southern. I'm gonna look to see. I don't want to break this set up because it is one through fifty five straight. Um, I'm gonna look and see if I can find you uh, nine and eleven in my my other extras. Um, 16 when the Dodsons started doing art. Look at the, you know, the Dodsons are like J. Scott Campbell with realistic like warrior women, um, not like the super skinny body and then just like put any face on it and call it a new issue. Sorry, did I say that out loud? I might. Okay. The Thousand Falcon. This is one of my favorite covers too. This is Laniel Francis. Oh, shoot. Good thing I've got an extra one of those because look at that. Ah! Just, just feel it back. Just feel it back. Yeah. I, I gotta, I, I gotta, I gotta attend to it now. I can't. Yeah, I, I would do the same. I can't let it go. But yeah, I, I love this cover. Just um, there's a couple of them with like in this series with two people jumping, which I just think is really cool. But yeah, that's that's gonna bum me out. Luckily, I've got a spare one of these I can um, replace in here. So you're just gonna throw that in the trash? No, I'm just gonna sell it. <laughs> normally. But I do have about seven comics in the trash right now because at some point I'm just like, okay, I can't fix that one. I don't need that one. I'm just not dealing with that one. So this is a couple of the soldiers from um, Scar Squadron up here in, in issue 19. Um, like three of them do. In issue 10, that's the one I couldn't think of. There was like two or three of them, or there was one of them undercover working for one of the huts or, or working undercover in one of the crime like laboratories. And this is my all time favorite Star Wars cover. One of my ten all time favorite Star Wars covers. That's just that's so badass, man. That just looks yeah. like a pop, you know, a, a pop art painting from like the fifties or something. Just so cool. Where'd you find these? Uh, my LCS man. They had them, and and he, he had them at just about hundred. And I said, you know, can I get my ten percent off that I usually get for being a subscriber? He's like, I'll give you twenty percent off. I said, sweet. Oh. Can't complain. I didn't. <laughs> Um, well, we got, you think I was done, Rob? I'm, I'm dominating your show. Yeah. So you yeah. got the whole lot for 100? Plus the no, 20%. 75. I got up to 55. I don't know why they put annual number one in the middle, but there you go. <laughs> 23. And now here's Scar Squadron, you know, going after them. 24. 25. So key collector lists 26 as, as a key. Because it's part of like this long running story they have, but there's nothing key about this as far as I know. It's it's part <laughs> of the diaries of Ben Kenobi, but that does not make something a key. Um, twenty seven. Here's a great one though. Twenty eight. Yeah. Look at this Yoda man. Nice. Thirty. Doctor Afra appears in thirty one because why not cross over with your favorite characters? that you're trying to promote. I forget who this guy is that they're fighting in 32. I read up to about 51 of these or something, and then I kind of, like, slacked off. So I have not read the last 20 in order. See, here's another jumping one, right? I like that. I just like when they got, like, people jumping. A little hut book. 36. What are we going on artwork here? Is this Neil Francis Hugh? Or, no, Peter Mayhew. Peter Mayhew, Mike Mayhew, Bill Mayhew. I don't know. It's one of the Mayhews. Peter Mayhew was Chewbacca, so he probably didn't do this cover. Probably not. Mike, Mike. Mayhew, Mike Mayhew probably did it. And I guess this is still Scar Squadron because they've got the different Paulettes. Maybe these are called Paulettes, the armor on your shoulder. I think that's what that's how you distinguish that they're like special stormtroopers. Uh, second annual was actually, this is one of those ones where like by the time the second annual comes out, Nobody cares anymore except the long-running collectors. This is one of those great stories. It's Princess Leia as a spy, right? And the whole thing is, like, told, like, 
in flashbacks as she's going through this imperial base trying to steal whatever or, or free whomever. I don't even know who what the goal was, and that's not the point. The point is it's just like one of those great, well written. It's almost like G.I. Joe twenty one in that like most of the story is told just through the artwork or first sneaking in and moving about, but then there is all like the narration. It's just a really, really solid issue. Solid issue, man. Thirty eight, Luke donning some new garb. Some guy looks like Clo Koon, but it's not. I don't I, I don't think it is because he's dead by this point. He died when Order 66 was executed. Now here's where it went weird. Like they ran out of ideas and they're just like going to different planets and like saving different people, but they kind of lost the thread here. But you know, it's your flagship book, so how can you stop producing it? 42. Yeah, this one with this like the women on this planet and everybody's like cross betraying each other. This is just like a bad pose from an 80s hip hop video. It's like, I don't know, man. I don't know. Uh, are people still here even? I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's the, the dopiest cover, dorkiest cover ever. I don't, I don't get that one. It's like, <laughs> boy, we're high school buddies goofing around. I have a question. Uh, since I've only just been watching the Clone Wars recently, is Asajj Ventress still alive at this point in the Star Wars universe? No. Um, you can go up and look uh, for a list of all the Jedi that were killed by Order 66, and I believe Asajj Ventress was one of them. Oh, this is cool, because this is a variant 51 that I've never seen before, and that has an intense amount of color rub on it. I need to get a black marker on all this. <laughs> on all this. <laughs> but I've never seen that. That's pretty cool. Um, 50... This is the one that has um, got the Princess Leia dress, but this is really cool. This is Marquez. Um, this is a probably a ratio variant, but it's totally ruined by color rub. Oh, well. Uh, so one of the things I like the best about Clone Wars is that they um, take... Let me just look at this, like Han doing the Luke pose. Really cool. So if you remember... Um, Phantom Menace, or sorry, Attack of the Clones, they introduce, like, all these Jedi, and you're like, holy cow, I get to see all the Jedi do something besides sit around a, a, a table talking about stuff. This is really awesome. This is what I've lived for since 1983 when I was a kid. And then, like, they, they burst into the Coliseum, and they kill everybody, and there's lightsabers flailing everywhere. You're like, all right, this movie sucks, but this is almost saving this movie for me. This is cool. <laughs> hey, next movie, kill them all. Well, I'll bet you they had cool backstories and interesting things. So in Clone Wars, you get to meet um, Asajj Ventress, obviously, is uh, is a Sith. But you get to meet um, Clo Koon, Kit Fisto, Quinlan Vos. You get to meet all these, or Oris things, Bounty Hunter. You get to meet all these really cool um, Jedi and Sith and, like, learn their stories. And you see them in, in season after season. So Clone Wars is a lot of fun to watch. Asajj Ventress... I believe is dead in canon, but I'm gonna have to double check. My boys are probably asleep right now, so I haven't uh, finished. Another good question. Uh, yeah. Since you're a comic book nerd when it comes to Star Wars, where would one go to look up Order 66? I mean, I know about it. Comic book people know about it, but where would somebody go to look for uh, so, Order 66 books? Wikipedia is probably the place that has Wikipedia. Um, has the probably like the the best most accurate it's a fan site but it's a pretty in-depth like, super nerdy fan site so if you just google um you know who are all the jedi that died in order 66 you'll find like that'll probably be the top search as a matter of fact who are all the jedi that died in order <laughs> 66 um and then, yep, the first hit was uh, Star Wars. Oh, actually, it's StarWars.Fandom.com. Then it's their wiki. So it is Wikipedia. So Kia D. Mundi, who's the big pointy-headed guy, like the Coneheads. Um, okay. Th where's the list? See, never click the links because they've been pretty good at just showing you. So Sith in Hiding. Is Asajj, Asajj Ven uh, Darth Bane survived? I don't, I don't know about Asajj Ventress, but yeah. The, the list is pretty cool. Um, you know, like uh, Master Jaro Tapel, Isla Secura, who is really good. Flo Koon, who had a great storyline. Kiadi Mundi, Master Chiara, Master um, Sindralig, I don't know. 
um, all these great, great Jedi that like we really did not get to meet. Um, and it was just such an incredible, incredible uh, shame um, until you go back and watch Clone Wars, which, you know, I always watch Clone Wars sporadically with my kids. Watching them now, like I'm this this vacation, I've been doing like a Clone Wars watch. I'm up to the fourth season. It is really a good show. Um, I've only watched it for the first time now. I am on the last episode of season six before the final season. Okay, now season seven is beyond belief good. So uh, to me, season seven redeemed the storyline of Revenge of the Sith. And like I, I, I'm you know. I'm out there understanding that everybody can love Star Wars and everybody has their own place for Star Wars and their own part of Star Wars that like in the large universe. I don't think you can argue that the prequels are good movies. I think people could say they liked them, they enjoyed them, they learned about Star Wars from them, they they started watching Clone Wars after that, they they thought it was cool, but you can't actually say they were good, well-made movies because they sucked as movies. But um to a large extent, season seven of Clone Wars redeemed Revenge of the Sith for me and made it a better movie. Um, I think that, that, you know, what happened is George Lucas is an incredible storyteller and a horrible writer and director. Um, and he just needed to leave the, the stuff alone to other people and put it in other people's hands, and he didn't. He got a little megaloma megalomaniacal, and he screwed stuff up. But that's just my opinion. Like the I said, Wars movie wasn't directed by George Lucas. That was Irving uh, Irving Kirsch. The Fire Strikes Back was not directed by. Mm -hmm. And everybody can you know it's considered by critics and fans alike as one of the best in the you know in the whole canon. But you know, um, I I actually have a theory that if the prequels had been animated movies, they would have been amazing. Like, I've, after watching Clone Wars, I'm realizing all the problems with the prequels is that the awkwardness of the dialogue and the awkwardness and the stiffness of the acting and the delivery of the line exist in the Clone Wars, but I don't mind because it's animated. And the CGI was so bad, it might as well be animated anyway. And if they just made that an animated set of movies, I would have been like, woohoo! <laughs> anyway, oh, yeah. Young romance. I've monopolized the conversation enough with my. Uh... What issue? No, number? I'm listening. I'm listening. Uh, 149. Nice. I'm actually fascinated by this because I don't have a very um, big knowledge of Star Wars. I watched the three movies at the theater, and I'm watching Mandalorian, and that's the extent of my Star Wars. So I'm I'm learning a lot right here. Now I'm thinking yeah, I'm going to watch Clone Wars for sure. Stuff. Yeah, you know the movie. I'm, watching, I'm gonna watch Clone Wars for sure. Rebels, just, I'll watch right after I finish Clone Wars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Rebels is really good too. Clone Wars, like I like I said, I just never got around to doing like a full run through because when it first came out, I was in my 20s or maybe early 30s, and I probably thought I was too cool for it. Like I thought it was gonna be a kiddie animated thing, but it's really not, man. It's really good. Holy shit! In season four, there's an episode called Massacre. Where they literally do massacre a whole shit ton of Sith uh, witches, and the whole background is uh, the color red. You're seeing people getting cut down left and right, and I'm going, Jesus Christ, is this like TV PG? I wouldn't let my kid watch this. Yeah. Well, I'm getting tired like a granny. You're an East Coast I know time. That feeling. So I want Central Time. It's eleven sixteen. Big shot. Ooh. Good yeah. midnight here. Big shot. Didn't you? 41. 1941. So did you, um, Night Tiger, did you start out collecting Golden Age or did you like just swing towards Golden Age at some point? Because I'm scared. Well, as, a, as a kid, I got the, um, the Overstreet Price Guide. And you know how they have the color pages in the middle? Mm -hmm. And I used to just fantasize thinking I'll never own these books ever. So I think it's when eBay started to become a thing and I got a better job. I got changed careers and I started making enough money to pay the bills and have some left over to buy comics. So. Nice. And once I realized if you can, if you search eBay, like a back issue yeah. bin, 
you can find good Golden Age books for inexpensive <clears throat> bomber comics. I pay twenty bucks for that. Yeah, it's missing it's missing some cover, but still from nineteen forty four. That's awesome. Just those colors being that vibrant from back then is awesome. I've been wanting these big shot early issues with this big trade dress for a couple of years now. And my comic shop had several of the early runs for under a hundred bucks each. So I grabbed them. Nice. Here's one that I just got from, from BWD. Wow. Teenage Love. A talent. That's when Teenage, that's when teenage Love wasn't uh, hooking up. It was a kiss on the cheek. Oh, man. <laughs> so chaste. Edgy. If that, if that ever was true. Just edge board. Yeah. I want to end the show now, so let's go around and see if there's anything coming up on anybody's channels that y'all want to promote. Lady Fantas, do you have anything coming up lately or soon? Um, Tomorrow on Southern Comic Geeks channel at 1 p.m. Central Time, the Saturday morning cartoon crew with Tacoma to Comics, actually, uh, and myself and some others will be having a comic auction. And uh, there'll be some steals and deals. So uh, come check it out. Wait, wait. Um, all, all seriousness, is that tomorrow? Shit, it's not tomorrow. It's on Saturday. Jesus. You had me scared like I'd been. I don't even know what day it is. So it's on Saturday at 1 p.m. Central Time, 11 a.m. Pacific. I have no sense of time because it's a vacation, and I'm sorry. There you go. And time doesn't exist when you're on vacation. I hear you, sister. Time is a flat circle. I told you I'm a granny. I don't know what time it is. Night Tiger, do you have anything coming up on your channel? I want. I don't know if I'll get around to it, but I'd like to do at least the uh, top thirty books that I've I bought for two, tw uh, 2020. I don't yeah. know if I'll get around to it. I do have an unboxing coming out either tomorrow or Friday. From um, I got something. I got a gift from Jesse or Simon Comics that was gifted from Comics NYC to me, and then I got um, an AOK -okay from Steve, which I showed here. Whoops, and a few other things. Sweet. But that's already that's already shot. It's going to be going up. And if I don't feel like not relaxing and kicking the lazy boy, I might do the top thirty buys of twenty twenty. Sweet man. Yeah, but well, nothing. Cool. You have like twenty three hours and forty minutes left. <laughs> Get on it. Tacoma Comics. Do you have anything coming up on your channel? Yeah, better lighting for my room, man. Um, this thing depresses me. No, I got the same thing as uh, Lady Fantastic. Will be uh, an auction on Saturday, Southern Comic Geeks channel. Uh, Saturday night, I'll probably be selling on Gorilla Todd's channel. And if I get, you know, I was not gonna do a top uh, top ten or anything, but looking around my room, I like realized this last year, like. It sometimes it feels like it's gone like that, but other times it actually has existed for 12 months. So I've actually gotten some cool comics in the last year that I realized I could put together. And do it. So I think I will do that and uh, go from there. Sweet. Thanks for stopping mm -hmm. by. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. Appreciate it. Tacoma, where are you? Are you at in Tacoma, Washington? Yep. Okay. Just curious. And you got also, some good buys. I was like, where is he buying that stuff he's... at? Oh, yeah. I, I just went to a new shop yesterday called Ancient Comics. Oh, my God. This guy, all he does is buy collections, and he's been in business since 1989, and he doesn't stop talking from the moment you walk in the door, and he wants to show you everything, and he hooked me up with great deals, and he just goes a mile a minute. But he has wall to wall of comics and boxes and rows and shelves and shelves, and then three more rooms upstairs. It was insane. Absolutely wow. insane. Yeah. Oh. Well, sounds like heaven. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, uh, well, since Ace has just dropped from the chat, I would just like to go ahead and promote her channel. It's called Brags and Board. She does it at least once a week, a couple times maybe even. She does great reviews on independent books, and uh, just check her out on Brags and Boards. Yeah, just got yeah, just got started. Sub her so up. Sub her up. 
Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. So uh, my name is Rob Worst. I will be on Lady Fantastic's channel this coming Friday, uh, maybe 8 o'clock, maybe 9 o'clock, maybe not at all, maybe earlier. Who knows? It's vacation time. So you can find me on Twitter at Rob Worst. You can find me on Instagram at Not Near Mint. I'm not going to check that shit until probably Thursday. And uh, uh, please don't DM me. <laughs> uh, please, Rob, please. Do, you eat, do you eat liverwurst? Yes. No. no okay. I eat pizza. I, I and eggs with bacon, but I don't eat liverwurst. I DM'd you today on Instagram. Sorry. No, it's okay. It's okay. I'm kidding. Certain people are fine, but if I don't know you and you're going like, hey, do you want to buy this? I'm like, I don't know you. <laughs> or uh, another one of my favorites. Hey, can I be the new co-host? And there's some that like very cool. There's others I don't know. And for the most part, it, the, the crew is our crew. Miracle Man, Comics in the Mind, Lady Fantastic, they're like a second family to me. And uh, we, we just don't replace people around here. It's just the way we are. So we want to thank you all, replay viewers, people that have stuck with us through the entirety of our show. Uh, we will be back in the new year. In the new year, it will be episode 69, Fuck, Mary Kill. Episode 3, Independent. Yeah, we're doing Independence, and we're having Anthony Sika. He does, oh my God, I got a bunch of his comic books. I need to read them. Uh, I got some original art he sent me. I'm looking forward to all that. So do remember to smash that like if you haven't already. Also, uh, you know, subscribe, hit that bell for notifications. We only do this once a week, every week, uh, Wednesday, 10 p.m. Eastern time, and we will be back then. Oh, and say hi, Ace. Goodbye, Ace. Hi. Sorry to hit my router, so my internet went out. <laughs> nah, it's okay. That That's basically the end of our show, so I am going to play us out with... Uh, the last time that you will be seeing this, because come the new year, I have a new intro, I have a new outro, but uh, this is the end of our show. Good night, everybody. See you next Wednesday. Bye. Bye. Thanks for having me. Bye. 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 Thanks for tuning in. If you want to see this episode again, along with a catalog of back episodes and issues, surf on over to Not Near Mint on YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. Subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. Rob Worst, Lady Fantastic, Miracle Man, and Comics on the Mind will be back next week, same time. Wednesday, 10 p.m. Eastern Time, on Not Near Mint. <laughs>